In this course, you will improve your JavaScript skills by building a shopping cart in JavaScript with no frameworks. Joy teaches this course. Joy works at Free Code Camp, and he is excellent at breaking down concepts for beginners. Be sure to leave a comment with something you learned in this course. Hey guys, Joy here. Today we're going to learn how to make a shopping cart just using vanilla JavaScript. So guys, this is the project that we're going to make today. As you can see that this is a clothing store and we have in total 12 items to sell. Every product card will have an image, a title, some dummy description, price and these options. So what are these options? These options will help you to specify how much quantity do you want of this specific product. Let's say that you want 15 pieces of this specific product. So you're going to increase the quantity here by this. Look at this. I'm making it 15. Or let's say that I want to decrease the quantity. I can decrease the quantity here like this. Okay. So guys, whatever product you select, you can always see the numbers updating here itself. Let me show you a sample. Okay. Let's say that I want to increase the quantity of this t-shirt by six. Okay. And I want to increase the quantity of this suit by seven. Then you can see that this number is updating itself automatically. And do you see these numbers here? 4, 5, 6, 7. What are these? These are your selections. These are your data. Even if you refresh the page, this data will not get erased. How is this possible? In JavaScript, there's a feature called local storage. Through that feature, you can save all of your data inside the browser. By that, even if you refresh the page, the data will never get erased. So we're going to learn how to implement local storage inside our project. And guys, look at this. If I click on this basket here, then you can see all of your selected products that you selected from the shop page. So here we're going to get the thumbnail of the product that we selected. We can get the quantity button here, the unit prices here. Along with that, we have this number. So what is this actually? So how is this calculated? This is calculated by multiplying the unit price by the total quantity, which is five times hundred is 500. Just like that, all the cards will do all of its calculations. And once all of these things are done, you can see the total bill here like this. Let's say that you want to increase the office shirt by 10. You can increase it here like that and you can see that this number updates itself and this total bill also updates itself. You can also decrease it like this. There we go. And let's say that you don't want this thing entirely. So what we can do is you can just click on this cross and it's gonna remove itself automatically like that. So it's gonna work just like that. The source code of today's project is in my GitHub repository. Link will be provided in the description down below. So once you enter the link, you can see that we have three branches in total. Okay, if I click on here, then you can see that we have the main branch, product images and the starter files. So what we're going to do is we're going to download the starter files and start our project. The finalized project will be here on the main. And what are these product images? Let me show you. If I click on here, then you can find the, all the 12 images here. Let me show you. Do you see this one here? We have all the product images here. And if I go back on the data.js, so what is this data.js? It carries all the data of our product cards. Let me show you a sample, okay? So if I go back to the store, do you see this data here? Yeah, all of this data are actually stored inside this data.js. Guys, don't worry because along the video, I'm gonna teach you how to utilize these resources. So let's start our main tutorial. Alright guys, before starting the tutorial, first of all, we need to set up our environment. To do that, you're gonna right click, create a new folder, okay? And then you can name it anything you wish, but for this tutorial, I'm gonna name it shopping cart, okay? Shopping minus cart, something like this, okay? And then we're gonna right click, open with VS Code, okay? If you don't have this option, don't worry. Just come over to the search bar, and then you just hit VS Code manually. So once it opens, you're gonna come to file, open folder like this, okay? Then come over to your desktop and then search for the folder that you created, which is this one, shopping cart, open, okay? And then you can see your project folder getting opened in VS Code. The source code of today's project is in my GitHub repository. I'm gonna provide the link of this repository in the description down below. So once you click on the link, you're gonna come over here and you're gonna find all the files and folders. Like look at this. We have the images folder here, you see? We need this one. For that, you just click on the code, then download zip. It's gonna get downloaded in a zip format. Then you're gonna open the zip like this, then come over to your desktop, and then extract the file like this, look. Okay? Then we're gonna open this folder, and do you see this images here? We're gonna drag it outside, okay? Next up, let's close this one, and then we get the images inside our source folder like this. By the way guys, this folder carries all the solutions, okay? I don't need it, 
but if you want to keep it and if you want to check it out sure no problem so i'm gonna delete that all right guys let's go back to our vs code here and you're gonna see this images folder you see i'm gonna open up this one initially you're gonna get four images don't worry guys i'm gonna add more images to this folder but for now we're just gonna work with four images let's open up this okay and then you're gonna find pictures of shirts t-shirts formal shirts etc okay you also get a suit here by the way guys you might have a question like where did i get these images from okay i got it from two websites first one is unsplash.com another one is called pexels.com okay so you just come over to any website and then you write here shirt okay enter then you're gonna find images of shirts uh, formal shirts casual shirts pants shoes etc okay if you scroll down then do you see this image here i took it from where unsplash.com so you can find that that same image on the folder you see so i really hope you understood how i got these images from and you can also use the same resources to do your own personal projects okay okay guys let's come back to our vs code and now we're going to create three files okay so first one will be index.html okay index.html then style.css and finally main.js okay there we go all right okay guys let's come back to our index.html and make boilerplate code to do that you're gonna hit exclamatory sign then you're gonna find this option if you don't find the option then do this you hit control space together and then you're gonna find emit here so if you click on this one the boilerplate code will be automatically generated this is called emit plugin of vs code okay and on the title we're gonna write here clothing store okay since this is a clothing store website okay something like this there we go one second okay perfect now do you see the style css i'm gonna link it here like this look l i n k listen if you don't find this option okay do this okay you're gonna hit control space together like this and then you're gonna find emit abbreviation you just click on this one there we go can you see that the code got automatically written so you don't have to write style CSS manually in the href. Do this guys. You just hit control space together. Can you see this path here? All of them are automatically shown up here. You just click on style CSS. There we go. I saved your time. Okay. Using emit. So now you're going to come here. Do you see these two tags here? Ending tags. You just come here and write SC. Again, if you don't find the option like this, you just hit control space together and then you're gonna select this option okay and on the source you're gonna come here and then write control space okay and then select this one do you see this main js click on it like this there we go save it next up come over to the body and let's write some sample text okay so let's write hello world something like this there we go all right guys now we're gonna use a plugin called live server if you don't have it just come over here and then write here live server something like this let me zoom in okay so do you see this one here live server made by whom Ritwik day just come over here and then install the thing once you install the live server then you're gonna come back to your, your html okay and then you're gonna right click here and then you're gonna find an option called open with live server okay by the way there is also an alternative can you see this one here on this ribbon this blue color ribbon you also get the option here it is called go live if you click on this one then the project will get opened in your web browser something like this do you see this hello world here let me zoom in in order to zoom in you just hit control and then you scroll your mouse wheel like this can you see this one you can just zoom in and zoom out like this there we go okay guys can you see this gap here okay these are the default styles of your browser so we need to remove those default styles of the browser in order to do that let's go back to your css okay so you're gonna write a star curly bracket okay m0 tab there we go this is what this is emit then you're gonna hit p0 tab there we go you see next up you're gonna write here box sizing border box something like this save it let's look at the result can you see that the gaps are gone okay and do you see this font here we're gonna replace the font family in order to replace the font family just come over here and then write body okay curly bracket now ff tab now you're gonna remove this safe and write ss if you don't see the option then do this you're gonna hit control space sans safe enter done okay save it so that, now let's look at the result can you see that the font family of our fonts changed all right guys so far so good we're done setting up our vs code project folder now we're gonna start coding 
So the very first thing that we're gonna build is this nav bar. Do you see this nav bar here? Let's build it up first of all. Okay, to do that, let's come back to our VS code here. Okay guys, come over to your index HTML and then scroll down to your body section here. Let's remove the hello world, we don't need it. We're gonna also use emit here to write HTML markup quickly. Follow along with me, okay? We're gonna hit dot nav bar tab. If you don't find the option, same solution just hit control space together then you're gonna find the option okay then hit tab there we go that's how we're gonna save time using which plugin the plugin's name is called emmet okay you can see that emmet automatically wrote me a div with the class name navbar brilliant okay guys let's come inside the navbar and now we're gonna hit h2 tab there we go so this will carry our brand logo name you can write anything you wish but i'm gonna write here clothing store okay clothing store there we go done so this is the result so far we only have our brand logo name here okay guys let's come back to the finalized project do you see this shopping cart icon here we're gonna make this one at the same time do you see this dark background color we're gonna apply this dark background color to our nav bar as well so let's come back to our vs code here okay and below the h2 tag we're gonna make another day with the class name cart look at this dot cart tab there we go now inside here, we're gonna have an icon. And after the icon, we're gonna have another div with the class name cart amount. Look at this, dot cart amount, okay? Something like this, there we go. And now inside here, we're gonna write zero. Okay, so why did I actually write the zero? Let me actually show you. So if you compare the thing with the finalized project, do you see this one here? We have a number here, do you see this 47? Initially, that's gonna be zero. That's why I wrote the zero. And for the icon, where will I get the icon from? I'm going to use a website called icons.getbootstrap.com, okay? So if you come over here, then if you scroll down, you're going to find a tons of icons here. So for our project, we're going to write here cart like this. And now if you scroll down, you're going to find a lot of options. Do you see this one here? We have a lot of options. So let's pick any one of them. But before picking any one of them, just scroll down. And you're gonna find the CDN. Can you see the CDN here? Just copy the CDN. Okay. Now let's come back to our uh, index HTML and then you just paste it inside the head like this. Save it. Done. Now we can freely use the CDN for icons. Let's scroll up. So I'm gonna use, um, I don't know, but let me just pick this one or let's pick this one. Okay. Now you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna find this called icon font. Just copy the thing. Let's go back to our VS code. And now do you see this one? before the cart amount this one okay just paste the thing here save it done let's look at the result okay so you have the, let me just zoom in a little bit do you see this one here this is the brand logo name this is our shopping cart icon and this is our zero here all right so now we're gonna style the thing and for the color guys for the background color do you see this dark background color How, where did i get the color from let me show you I got it from coolers.co. Do you see this one here? Coolers.co. I got it from here. So how are you gonna use the thing? You just come over to explore trending palettes like this, okay? Next up, I just went to the search and then I just picked on the black like this. Then if you scroll down, then you're gonna find tons of color palettes. I use this color. Can you see this one here? 212529. I use this one. So I'm just gonna copy up this one and then let's go back to our VS code. Guys, we're done writing the HTML markup for our navbar component, okay? So just copy up the class name and let's go back to our style CSS and at the bottom here, you just write dot paste, curly bracket. Okay, so why did I write the dot? Because if you come back to HTML, do you see this one here? This is a class, okay? If the thing is a class, then you gotta write a dot. But if it's an ID, as an example, let me just write here ID, okay? Navbar. So if the thing is an ID like this, then you have to select the thing by writing a hashtag here. Hashtag navbar, then curly bracket. So I really hope you understood the difference between selecting a ID and class inside your CSS. Okay, let's remove that one. Let's come back to our style CSS, remove this one. So we're going to keep a dot navbar. Okay, next up we're going to write here background color. Okay, easily write this BGC tab. There we go. Do you see that hashtag FFF? Let's remove that and paste the color that we copy. So I'm going to write here 212, okay, 529, 529, save it. Let's look at the result. So if you go back here, you see everything is complete dark. We can't see anything. So in order to see something, let's go back here and change the font color. Okay, so to, 
to do that you just write here color sorry color like this and then write here white done let's look at the result you see we have the result so far all right guys let's go back here and apply some padding okay so p tab so you're gonna write here 25 pixel and then 60 pixel so why did i give two values here let me explain the 25 pixel you see this is the value for the top and bottom and the 60 pixel is the value for the left and right so padding top and bottom will be how much 25 pixels and padding left and right will be 60 pixels okay let me show you the result if you come back here so do you see this value here this is how much this is 60 pixels here this is 25 pixel here 25 pixels here and there will be 60 pixels here as well so i really hope you understood how i applied the padding okay all right guys our shopping cart icon looks like this but we want it to look like this can you see this one here so let's go and style this thing okay so let's go back to our vs code by the way guys it's also a very good thing to write comments so in order to write nice comments on our code let me show you a new thing okay you just come to the extensions and write here better comment okay better comment like this and now you're gonna find this can you see this one here better comment written by aaron bond just click on this one and then install the thing so let me show you the cool feature of using this extension okay so you can just write beautiful colorful comments let me show you so if you write slash star star enter okay star and then star star slash if you come here and if you write here exclamatory sign then you can see that your comment is now red color do you see that so i'm just gonna use the plugin i also recommend you use the same plugin which is called better comment written by aaron bond okay so once you install a thing you just come over here and let me show it to you again you just right here slash star star okay enter star and then star star slash again okay so if you hit exclamatory sign like this it's gonna be in red color and if you hit question mark like this then it's gonna be in blue color can you see that so you have a lot of options so i'm gonna use the red color okay something like this and then here i'm gonna write changing default styles of the browser okay something like this all right and now i'm going to scroll down here in this section i'm going to make another comment so let me just cop copy this thing from there and then put it here and then here i'm going to write nav bar styles are here okay nav bar styles are here something like this there we go okay all right guys our task right now is to make the shopping cart icon with a number indicator okay but look at our results so far we have the icon and the number here we want this thing to be on the very right side how do we do it we do it by using a property called flexbox okay so let's go back to our html which is actually here okay so here's the rule the very first rule of using flexbox is you have to use flexbox inside the parent selector in our cases look at this one can you see this one here this is the main parent okay and this one will be the children this is also another children so how many children do you have you have two children inside this parent okay so let's target this one inside css it is already targeted here so just come here and write df tab okay display flex next up uh if you save it then you can see some result look at this can you see this one here previously this thing was here okay now it's on the right side that is because the moment you enable display flex there's a default property called uh, flex direction okay so the default value of this property is called row that's why you saw this one okay can you see that but if you click if you come here and then if you write a column like this save it now look at the result can you see that this was the previous behavior but we want it to be in a uh, in a format of row okay so that's the result so far okay guys i'm gonna keep it here and i'm gonna code below okay there's another property called justify content okay so in order to put this thing and this thing apart from each other we're going to use that justify content property follow along with me jc jc stands for justify content sb means space between tab okay save it there we go can you see that now this is here and our icon is on the very right side so far so good okay now we're going to style our icon here so let's get started first of all let's go to our html okay to inspect the uh, structure look at this okay guys this is our cart here and inside this cart we have two children okay this is the icon and this one is the cart amount which indicates how many things you have on your uh, basket it is zero at the moment okay so we're gonna style this so let's just copy this one come over to style css and at the bottom here dot paste curly bracket okay now we're gonna style this element 
First things first, let's set the background color to white, okay? BGC tab, done, okay? And then we're gonna set the color to black. Something like this, look. Not black actually, did you remember that we used this color from coolers.co? We're gonna use this color, okay, done. Okay, done. Now let's save this thing and then let's look at the result, okay? So guys, look at this. This is the result so far. Let me just zoom in a little bit, okay? So that you can see it better. There we go. Now listen guys, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the font size so that, so that it looks bigger even without uh, zooming in like this. And then we're gonna apply some padding and border radius. Let's go. So let's go back to our VS code, okay? And then let's give a padding of five pixel, okay? P, five pixel, tab, done, okay? And then increase the font size to 30 pixel. Font minus size, how much? 30 pixel, done. Let's look at the result, okay? There we go, it became bigger. Let me just zoom out like this, uh, up to 100%, there we go. It looks much better. Okay, so now we're gonna also apply some border radius so that we can make this, do you see these corners here? We want to make those corners rounded, okay? Let's apply some border radius like this, look. Uh, border radius, border minus radius, okay? How much? Four pixel, there we go. Save it, let's look at the result. Yeah, there we go, we have this result so far. All right, guys, do you see this zero here? I want to hang this here. Just like our finalized project, look at this. Can you see this uh, 47 here? This is actually hanging at the top right corner, okay? We're gonna do the exact same styles on this element as well, okay? So let's get started. So first of all, let's go back to our, uh, what's it called, index HTML, okay? And then we have to target that element. Do you see this cart amount here? So what is this? This is a class. So we're gonna copy this thing since it's a class. So you're, you're gonna scroll down and then you're gonna write here dot paste, okay? Curly bracket, oh, sorry. Curly record and the very first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the font size, okay? Font minus size, one second. Font size, we're gonna set it to how much? 16 pixel. You can use any value you like here, but I'm gonna put it to 16 pixel. Next up, set the background color to red, okay? BGC, tab, then you're gonna write here red, okay? And then set the color to white like this, white. Uh, here is it, okay? Save it, let's look at the results so far, okay? There we go, you see, we have the zero here, which is white in color and it has a background color of red. All right, now we need to hang this on the top right corner. In order to do that, we're gonna use a property called position absolute, look at this. So I'm gonna come here and then I'm gonna write POS ABS, okay, tab. So position absolute, let's look at the result. So we are gonna see this result so far. Now we need to hang this on the top right corner. In order to do that, look at this. You just come back here and then write top, okay, zero. And then you're gonna write here right, oh sorry, not inherit, it's gonna be zero as well. Save it, let's look at the result. Okay, now you can notice something odd. The thing is, can you see this zero here? It's now on the very top right corner. The main reason for that is wherever you apply this position absolute, huh, by default, by default, this body will have a property called, look at this, position relative, something like this. That's why it behaves like this. But we don't want this thing to behave like this. We want the zero to be where? We want the zero to be exactly here. Okay, just like our this one, just like the finalized project. In order to solve this, look at this. You just come back to a VS code. Do you see this property, position, relative? You just cut it, okay? Now scroll down. Uh, do you see this card here? You just paste it here like this, look. Okay, now save it. Let's look at the result. Uh, here is it. There we go. Can you see that? Now it is working perfectly fine. So guys, I really hope you understood how the position relative and the position absolute properties work. If you don't get it, don't worry. I have an entire dedicated video. Can you see this one here? Learn CSS position property with examples. You can just view this video. It is just only almost 16 minutes long, okay? All right, guys, now look at this component here, okay? This zero is actually inside. We want it to be a little bit outside. At the same time, we're gonna apply some border radius and padding as well. So let's get started, okay? Okay, guys, let's go back to our VS code and I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller, okay? And then I'm gonna keep it here. I will do all the styles here on the cart amount, okay? Okay, guys, what do I want? I want the zero to be a little bit up and then on the right side. In order to do that, I'm gonna come here on the top property, remove the zero and then write minus 15 pixel. Like this, save it, then you can see the zero going a little bit up. Okay, in the same way, if you put here positive value like this, save it, then, a, then the zero will go down. Okay, so I want this, this thing to be in negative value like this. Save it, now you can see the zero popping up. At the same time, do you see this right? Okay, I'm gonna adjust it as well to minus 10 pixel like this. Save it, then look at the result, there we go. Can you see that? It is now shifting to the right side. Next up guys, let's apply some border radius and padding as well. So P3PX tab, okay? 
Now guys, you can see that the zero component became a little bit bigger. At the same time, I'm gonna apply border radius, okay? Border, sorry, uh, border radius, how much? Three pixel, okay, save it. There we go, we have the result so far. Now guys, let's compare this with our finalized project. Look at this, okay, can you see that? It is totally identical. All right, guys, we have successfully built up our navbar component. Now, the next thing that we're gonna build is these cards. Can you see these cards here? We're gonna build these cards to hold our image, the title, description, price, and these buttons, which will help us to increase the quantity and decrease the quantity as well. So let's get started. Okay, guys, you might have a question like, how did I make this card layout here? It's very simple. I used CSS grid property, and then I made four columns here, okay? In order to replicate the same thing, what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna make a div, and then we're gonna put all the cards inside there. Let me show you how I did the thing. So you're gonna go back to your VS code inside HTML, okay? Do you see this navbar? It's complete. We're gonna fold it. How to fold it? Put your mouse here, okay? Then you're gonna see a small chevron here. You just click on it, and then you can see that your code is folded. Perfect. Now listen, we're gonna make a div with a class name shop like this, look dot shop at the same time we're going to give it an id as well hashtag shop tab the main reason for putting both the class and the id is that we're going to target this inside css and we're going to target this id inside javascript okay so far so so far so good guys save the thing now listen inside here uh one second let's just look at the finalized project okay uh, where is it it's here so guys how many cards can you see here one two three four right so now look at this let's just come back here and then let's make four div with the class names item look at this dot item star four tab there we go okay now let's go back there and let, let's see what do we have first of all we have image and then do you see all the informations on this card we're gonna make just one div and we're gonna put all the inf information inside there so i'm gonna name this one image and this one will be called details okay let me show you how how you're gonna do the thing so for now, I will not touch this three. I will just work with this one, okay? Let's just, first of all, perfect only one div, okay? And then we can just perfect the other things by just copy pasting the thing. Let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, guys, inside here, I'm gonna write IMG tab, okay? This will hold my image. Don't write, okay? Just do, uh, just put your cursor inside the source and then hit control space. You're gonna see this images, enter and then we're gonna select the image number one like this, okay? Save the thing, let's look at the result, okay? Okay guys, if you look at the result, you can see that the image is huge, okay? We cannot work with this image. In order to make it smaller, just follow along with me, okay? Just come over here on your index HTML, okay? Do you see this image here? Just write here width, okay? Equal to double quote, just put 200, okay? Like this, don't put pixels, just 200 as it is, okay? It's still gonna work like a pixel, don't worry. Just save the thing, let's look at the result. You see, the image becomes smaller, perfect. Next up, we're gonna put the details. Can you see these details here? So let's go and put those details by coming to the HTML and below the image, we're gonna make another div with the class name dot details. Look at this, dot details tab. There we go, you see? Okay guys, inside these details, we're gonna have the title tag, the description, let me show you what we're gonna have. First of all, we're gonna have the title tag, the description, the price, and the buttons, okay? Let's make those things. Let's just come over here, and here, inside here, you're gonna write H3 tab. Okay, we're gonna write here casual shirt like this. There we go. Now, below this one, we're gonna make a P tag. Okay, P tab. Then you're gonna write lorem seven, or you can just specify any word you like. Okay, then you're gonna hit tab like this. There we go. Okay, now, guys, below this one, we're gonna have two things together. Okay, let me just show you one thing. One second. So, this is price and the buttons. We're gonna have a one div, and inside that div, we're gonna have both the price and the buttons. Let me show you what I mean by that. Okay. So you just come over here and below the p tag look at this we're gonna write here dot price minus quantity okay something like this there we go now inside here look at this h2 tab here we're gonna have the price okay dollar sign 45 okay save it let's look at the result so you're gonna see the 45 dollars here now guys let's make the buttons okay so in order to make the buttons look at this Below the price, guys, you're gonna make a div with a class name buttons. Look at this, dot b u t t o n s tab, okay? Now, guys, inside here, we're gonna use bootstrap icons. In order to use bootstrap icons, you just come over here and then you're gonna write here icons dot get bootstrap dot com, okay, this website. So, guys, we're gonna use icons from this website, okay? Now, you're gonna scroll down, you're gonna see a small search bar here. Just come here and then write plus, okay? 
Now, if you scroll down, then you're gonna see this plus. Another thing that you're gonna see is plus LG, which is a large size. Okay, guys, if you didn't include the CDN link, just copy the link, okay? Then come over to your HTML inside the head tag, okay? Just come here, and if you didn't paste it before, just paste the thing like this, okay? And then save it. Done. Now, we can freely use bootstrap icons into our project, okay? Let's come back here, and where's the large? You see this one here? I'm gonna open it in a new tab, and then I'm gonna copy the thing, okay? Let's go back to our VS Code, scroll down, and do you see buttons here? Inside here, okay? I'm gonna paste the thing, like this, save it. Okay, let's go back, and now I'm gonna get minus, okay? Like this, M-I-N-U-S, okay? Now, you're gonna see two dash. This is the small one, I mean the standard one, and this is the large one, okay? So, uh, so I'm gonna get this one like this, okay? Let's copy the thing, let's go back. There we go. Now, before the plus, I'm gonna put the minus, okay? There we go, done. Now, guys, between these two icons, you're gonna have a div with a class name quantity. Let me show you. Dot Q U A N T I T Y tab, okay? Now, you're gonna place zero here. Okay, what's the reason for putting a zero between these two icons? The main reason is, look at this. Look at this. this is the plus icon, right? Every time you click on the plus, this number will increment. At the same time, if you use, I mean, if you click on the minus, this number will decrement. Let me show you a sample from the finalized project. Okay, look at this one. Do you see this one? This is the plus icon, this is the quantity here, and this is the minus. Every time you click on this one, the quantity increases and it shows up here. Every time you click on this one, the quantity decreases and it shows the result here. So guys, I really hope that you understood why I wrote these lines, okay? All right, guys, with this, our markup is complete. Let's save the thing and let's look at the result, okay? Now, this is the result so far. It looks like this, but don't worry, guys. We're gonna add style so that it looks like this, okay? The very first thing that I'm gonna use is display grid. And then we're gonna make four columns. How many columns are here? Count with me. One, two, three, four, okay? So let's go and make four columns. So in order to make that, so if you recall about Flexbox, if you want to use Flexbox, you gotta apply that on the parent. In our case, look, who is the parent? If I fold this one like this, look at this, okay? Who is the parent of all the items? The shop is the parent of all the items, right? Now, I'm gonna apply my display grid where? Inside the shop, okay? This is class here, just copy the thing, huh? Then come over to your style CSS, then scroll down. Oh, by the way, guys, I made a small mistake. Do you see this one here? I wrote the font size two times, okay? Just remove one from here, like this, save it, okay? Now, I'm gonna scroll down and make a comment. All right, guys, before coding, first of all, let's make a comment here, okay? I mean, a better comment with some colors, okay? In order to make it, just write slash, star, star, enter, star, okay? Exclamatory sign for red color, or you can use question mark for blue color. I'm gonna use red color, okay? Exclamatory sign, then star, star, slash, done. So here, you're gonna write a comment, shop items, styles are here, okay? Shop uh, items, styles are here. There we go, done, okay? Now, I'm gonna hit dot paste. Curly bracket. Now, inside here, I'm gonna use the very first line is display grid. Look at this, DG tab, okay? Save it. Let's look at, uh, let's look at the result. You're not gonna see any changes. Let, let's see, you see? We don't have any changes. Now, we're gonna add more lines to it so that we can see the changes. So, guys, come over here and then write GTC tab, okay? Now, guys, one second. Let's go back to the finalized project. So, how many uh, columns can you see here? Four, right? And I specify 223 pixels of width for each and every one of these columns, I mean each and every one of these cards, we're gonna do the same thing, look at this. So you're gonna come here and then you're gonna write great template columns, repeat, okay? So how many columns do we need? Four, you write four, comma. So how much width should each of these columns, I mean cards should be 223 pixels. So you're gonna write here 223px, done, okay? Save the thing and now let's look at the result. So if you come over here, can you see that? text were just outside now it is inside okay it's like an invisible wall here okay let me show you live one second so i'm just gonna keep it here and now look at this i'm gonna make a comment like this okay save it now can you see this text are actually outside now if you put it here like this save it now there we go now it feels like there's an invisible wall actually the space is getting divided okay all right, guys, so far so good. Next up, what we're gonna do is do this border here, black color border. We're gonna utilize that black color border in our card, okay? So let's go and make that. Okay, so now let's come back to your index.html. So we are done setting up the shop. Now do this item here, just copy the item, okay, like this. Let's come back to your style CSS, scroll down and below the shop, okay? Dot paste. Now curly bracket, you're gonna write here border, huh? border, 
2 px one second 2 px solid you can write here hashtag do you remember the color that we use from coolers.co use this color okay save the thing let's look at the result now can you see this thing we have four cards here okay card number one two three four okay even though they don't have data but still they are showing up here the main reason for that is if you come over here on the html do you see how many div do we have here four divs that's why four cards got generated here okay so if you remove anything from here like this save the thing now look at that you see the cards are gone but don't worry guys we're gonna generate more cards okay first of all let's perfect only one card and then we can just copy paste the other cards don't worry guys all right guys can you see the image it looks smaller compared to the card border okay so let's fix that in order to fix that just come over to your index html and then you're gonna open up the item do you see this width here just utilize 220 pixel like this save it now let's look at the result there we go it looks perfect now can you see these edges it looks sharp we're gonna make border radius okay so in order to do that come back to your style css and on the item we're gonna write here border radius 4 pixel okay border there is it okay border radius 4 pixel save the thing let's look at the result there we go you see now it's rounded all right guys look at this can you see this nav bar and this card they don't have there is no gap between them let's put some gap okay let's come back to your style css and um do this is nav bar you just write here mb tab and then 30 pixel like this okay save the thing there we go done okay now guys we're gonna generate three more cards so that it looks like this okay so let's go back to your index html here now just close the chevron like this copy the thing huh and then you paste it here then you close the chevron then do the same thing two more times okay like this all right then save the thing let's look at the result okay now look at this guys the details doesn't look perfect but don't worry we're gonna style them okay now how many cards do we have four cards there is no gap in between them and it is not on the center just like this one in order to make those things what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our style css on the shop where is the shop um here is it okay this is the shop we're gonna write here gap 30 pixel like this look gap 30 pixel save the thing there we go can you see that we have gap in between all the cards at the same time we want them to be on the exact center in order in order to do that just come back here and just write it, there's a property called justify content jc and we want the thing to be center right so write jcc tab done save it there we go so we have all the cards on the exact center brilliant okay guys now let's compare the thing with our final project look at this can you see this one here we have a little bit of padding here can you see this one here but we don't have padding on our project okay at the same time can you see this gap here yeah they have a gap but we don't have any gap between the title tag and the paragraph tag at the same time this price as well so let's make those changes so in order to make those changes come back to your style css and then just come back to our index html okay open up any one of them I'm gonna open the first one okay now do you see these details here copy the details huh come back to your style css at the bottom okay write dot paste curly bracket okay the very first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna write display flex tab there we go save the thing now can you see this one here it looks odd it looks like a format of row can you see that but we don't want them because look at the finalized project it is in a format of column can you see that but it is actually row so in order to fix that, I mean, why does it happen? That's because there is a property called flex direction. One second, flex minus direction, okay? The default value of this one is row. Every time you write display flex, this thing automatically gets triggered, okay? In order to stop that, just write display uh, flex direction and then set it to column like this, okay? Save the thing, there we go, perfect. Now guys, next time let's apply some padding, okay? P 10 pixel tab, done. There we go, you see, this looks much better than before and now can you see this tag uses uh description and the price let's put gap in between them in order to put the gap between them just come here and then write there's a property called gap property okay gap 10 pixel save there we go you see now we have gap all right guys now let's compare the thing with our final project there we go you see the price is here and all the buttons are here but look at our one this is not perfect right so let's fix that in order to fix that let's go back to our html okay now where is the price and the buttons look at this this is my buttons here and this is my price who is the parent okay here's a question for you who is the parent of this price tag and this buttons 
it is very easy guys this one can you see this price quantity this is the parent of both these two tags okay so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna copy this thing like this let's come back to our style css at the bottom okay dot paste curly bracket okay okay guys once this is done inside here we're gonna write display flex look at this df tab okay if you save the thing now the button was actually here now it, is, it behaves like a format of row okay why did it happen if you recall that I say that there is a property called flex direction and every time you write this one the default property becomes flex direction row something like this look flex one second flex direction row okay save the thing you will see, you will see no changes because this is the default property already but if you want to change it just write column like this save it you're gonna see different result okay so for this tutorial I'm gonna use row like this save the thing there we go okay guys next up I want them to be apart from each other okay in order to do that just come here and then write jc sb tab okay justify content space between say the thing there we go we have the result so far all right now guys we're gonna style this icons in order to do that let's come back to our html okay can you see these buttons here yeah this is the main parent right now and these are all the children's okay how many children does the does does the button have three children's okay so now let's copy this one let's come back here and now scroll down dot paste okay curly bracket now guys if you guessed that I'm gonna use display flex you are correct I'm gonna use display flex now look at this in which format is it in in the format of column okay we want them to be in a row just like this one look at this it is a row format okay in order to do that just come back here and then write df tab okay what's the default property of flex direction here row okay save the thing there we go you see now, even if you don't write the display, uh, sorry, the flex direction here, no problem, okay? But if you wish, then you can write here, no problem, okay? So write, let's write here flex direction like this, put it to row, okay? There we go, done. Now, guys, we need a little bit of gap. In order to put some gap, just write here gap, 8 pixel, okay? Save the thing, there we go, we got some gap. Okay, now, if you want to set some font size, optionally, you can do that as well. So let's say that font size like this. Let's say 16 pixel, okay? There we go, save the thing. Okay, we, you will see no changes because guys, this is the default property already, okay? If you, let's say, write here 26 pixel like this, save the thing, it's gonna go bigger, you see? But for this tutorial, I'm gonna keep it 16 pixels. If you want to make it bigger, sure, best of luck, okay? Now guys, can you see this plus and the minus? If you notice this thing inside the finalized project, you can see that this is green color and this is a red color, okay? So in order to do the exact same thing, just come over to your index HTML, okay? Do you see this B dash minus LG? This is the minus, okay? Copy the thing, come over to your style CSS and at the bottom, just dot paste, okay? This is what? This is the minus, right? Curly bracket, then write here color, oh sorry, color, mm -hmm. then you're gonna write here red, okay? Save the thing, there we go. Now your minus icon is now red color. Let's make it green, okay? In order to do the thing, same process just come back to your html copy this thing okay let's come back to your style css and the bottom right dot paste okay curly bracket now you're gonna write here color what was the color green green there we go done okay let's look at the result brilliant okay guys let's draw an imaginative line okay on the x-axis here okay if you draw an imaginary line on the exact center here like this look at this then you can realize that this this is a button here and do you see this price here? They are not aligned on the exact center. Okay, let me just show you a sample. Okay, if you see this line here inside the price quantity selector, just comment the thing. Okay, save the thing. Now, there we go. Can you see this thing here? They are not aligned on the exact center. Now, in order to save the, in order to solve this thing, just come here and then write AIC tab. Okay, align item center. This thing works on the x axis and this one works on the y axis. Okay, save the thing. There we go. Problem solved. Okay. Now you're gonna get this code back like this, okay? Save the thing, there you go, perfect. Okay guys, let's come back to the finalized project and then right click inspect, okay? If you make the thing smaller, let me show you. If you make this thing smaller, how many columns can you see? Four, right? If you make it smaller like this, there we go. Now it becomes two columns, okay? If you make it even further, then it's gonna become one column like this, there we go. Now this is called a responsive website, okay? In order to replicate the exact same result, what we are gonna do is you're gonna come back to your style CSS, okay? One second, where's the shop? Okay, 
Do you see this shop here? Below the shop, we're gonna make two media query, okay? Look at this. At the rate, media, and then you're gonna write here max minus width, okay? So we're gonna write here first breakpoint will be 1000 pixels, okay? Then you're gonna write curly bracket, you're gonna write here dot shop, curly bracket, okay? Inside here, just copy the thing, okay? Paste the thing here, okay? Now, what do I want? The moment the, the, moment the screen hits 1000 pixel, I want the thing to be how many columns? Just two columns, okay? Just specify two here, done. Save the thing, okay? Now let's come back here on our result. Right click, inspect, okay? Now let's make it smaller like this, there we go. The moment you, what's the width right now? 1040, okay? The moment you hit below 1000, look at this. Now it becomes two columns from four columns, okay? Now let's make it even smaller. It's not gonna work because we didn't specify the media query. Let's do that as well. Just copy the entire thing, okay? Paste it here, and here specify 500 pixel like this, okay? And now here you're gonna write one. Now guys, save the thing, let's look at the result, okay? Make it below 500 pixel, okay? I mean, through looking here, okay? Something like this, look. There we go, it works perfectly fine, okay? All right guys, so far so good. We have successfully completed the HTML and the CSS part. Now we're gonna start the JavaScript part, okay? But before that, guys, look at this one. Can you see these cards here? These cards have different data. Look at the image, okay? They are different. Look at the tags, they are different. The price is different as well. Okay, so how did I make these cards? I just did this, look at this. So how did we do it? Look at this. Inside this div with the class name shop, we just perfected one card. And then we copied and then pasted the thing. Now, if you want to replace the data, let's say that you want to replace the image then you have to replace this uh, tag. Let me show you a sample, okay? So how do you replace the thing like this, look. So first of all, you remove the image from here and then control space. You're gonna select image number two. Then you're gonna replace it with what? Office shirt, okay? Office shirt. Save the thing, let's look at the result. And wait a second, let me just also clear this one and then write 100, okay? Save the thing. Let's look at the result, guys. There we go, can you see that? Now the data changed. Now, how many cards do you have? You have how many cards? Let's see, four cards. Let's say that we have 100 cards. Does that mean that you're gonna manually do the, all the things? No guys, obviously no, don't do it. At the same time, look at this. Most of the data here, most of the markup are just copy paste, which means most of the things are repeating itself again and again and again and again and again, right? Don't do this thing guys, don't copy and paste the thing here. In order to solve this issue, we're gonna use JavaScript. Okay, so let's start the JavaScript. Make sure guys you wrote this line at the bottom, okay? Otherwise JavaScript will not work. Okay, the very first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna copy the ID. Do you see this ID here? So my main intention was I'm gonna target this inside style CSS and then I'm gonna target this inside ID. I mean, sorry, inside the JavaScript, okay? So let's copy this one. Let's go back to our main JS and how do you actually target an ID inside main js look at this first of all you're gonna write a variable okay let anything you can write anything here so i'm gonna write here let shop like this look let shop equal to you just write here document huh oh sorry document okay then what is this look at this it is an id right so you're gonna write here dot get element by id then you're gonna write here bracket single quote or double quote okay and then you're gonna paste the thing look at look at this there we go so now we have successfully targeted our shop and we have also saved that inside a variable okay now if you want to test the thing how the thing actually works just save it okay and then at the bottom you can write here console log okay console.log and then you just write here shop like this save the thing let's look at the result okay so now this is the result you hit f12 or just right click click on the inspect okay now you're gonna go to this console here you see this so this entire html element came inside the console if you open up this one there we go can you see this one here now if you select on this one you can see that this thing gets highlighted if you select on this one the thing gets highlighted okay so we what did we do we got the entire markup inside the console okay we don't want to do that so what my main focus is that i'm going to make a function here okay and then i'm going to make the function in a way that it prints me all the cards automatically all right in order to do that look at this guy Look at this guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a function, look at this, let generate shop, okay? Generate shop, okay? It's gonna be a ESX arrow function. So you're gonna write here 
equal to sign this will be your bracket equal to angle bracket curly bracket this is called esx arrow function and now guys let me show you the regular function the regular function looks like this function okay a b c d bracket curly bracket this is called a regular function this is called esx arrow function okay we're gonna use this one all right guys now i'm gonna remove the thing okay now guys so how do we stop the repetition actually first of all follow along with me do you see these things just uh, how many things are here four items are here right let's just remove three of them like this let's just keep one piece okay let's just come back here and do this uh, function here let's trigger the function like copy the thing and then paste it here like this okay so we're defining the function here and then we're invoking it here okay and do this console here we don't need the console okay save the thing now guys do one thing inside here you're gonna write a return statement okay return like this now guys for sorry i made a mistake return there we go now guys we're gonna use template literal look at this guys this is called a double code this is used to write strings we're not gonna use this no no no, guys we're gonna use backticks this is called backticks so this is used to make template literals if you don't find it you're gonna find this key below the exit key so look at your keyboard there's something called a escape key i mean exit key okay below that exit key you're gonna find the back tick so you just click it one time then you're gonna see the back tick okay so we're not gonna use this thing we're gonna use back ticks okay now guys do this inside here uh one second you just come over to index html just cut the thing like this Control x save the thing okay now let's come back here like this now what you're gonna do is by the way guys one second just look at the result we are we are gonna have nothing okay now in order to see some result do this just paste the thing like this okay save the thing okay guys now let's look at the result okay we're still gonna see nothing why is that that's because you didn't specifically define that where this thing should get printed okay you didn't define the thing now we're gonna define the thing so in order to define the thing like where do you want to get where do you want this thing to get printed we want this thing to get printed inside the shop because we have defined the class styles inside style css look at this we already have the grid defined okay which means that we want the card to get generated inside here that's why i selected the shop okay now let's follow along with me just copy the shop like this okay now come here paste the thing then you're gonna write here dot inner html and then you're gonna hit equal to sign done save the thing okay now let's look at the result there we go guys can you see this one card here we have successfully generated the card using what using javascript okay now guys what we're gonna do is look at this can you see these values here these are called hard-coded values okay which means that we just use our hand to write the thing now we're gonna automate the thing how do you automate the thing look at this first of all you're gonna make a array here look at this we're gonna write here let okay shop items shop items equal shop items data okay equal to you're gonna make a array here like this okay now guys let's say that we have uh, how many data do we have actually let's check we have one two three four we have four data right so in order to write the data inside here look at this we're gonna use curly bracket this is called object which means that we are storing object inside array so if we write one curly bracket i mean if we write one object which means that in our shop we have only one thing to sell but if you hit comma curly bracket and then if you do it four times like this which means that we have how many sh uh, items to sell four items to sell okay so these are actually defined inside our objects now look at this let's first of all make the first object so how are you gonna make the thing first of all you're gonna set the id look at this id colon double quote okay you can write anything you wish no problem i won't mind just write anything okay don't keep it blank then you're gonna write a comma okay then you're gonna put a name here oh by the way guys one more thing this id do you see this thing this should be unique okay and now on the name we're gonna write a casual shirt okay casual shirt there we go now you're gonna hit comma you're gonna set the price okay so what i'm doing is my main objective is do you see all the data here like this one this one this one i'm just storing them here okay so let's complete the thing so price is gonna be 45 okay then comma desc description okay you're gonna set the description to look at this double uh, double quotes lorem seven or eight tab there we go okay 
Now below this one, you're going to get image IMG colon double quote. Okay. Images slash IMG minus one dot JPG. Okay. So to, to not make any mis spelling mistakes, just scroll down. Do you see this thing here? Where is it? Uh, this is image here. The source is already here. Just copy the thing. Yeah. And then put it here like this. That's how you that's how you don't make any spelling mistakes okay so look at this we have successfully defined one item inside our shop okay in the same way look at this guys i'm gonna copy the thing okay and then i'm gonna paste them inside here like this okay look at this which means that we have how many items we have four items in our shop at the same time those four items has this data okay now guys as i told you the id should be unique let's make it unique like let's write anything okay at the same time come here anything okay no problem come here and then i'm going to give it a random value like this there we go done now the second one will be office shirt let's try office shirt on the price we're going to set it to 100 okay and the image just replace the one with two like this there we go now the next one will be our t-shirt okay set the price to 25 like this and image will be which one three okay scroll down you're going to set the image to four the price will be uh, 300 because it's a men's suit okay men's Let's remove this thing and then write suit. There we go. Done. Save the thing. Okay. Now, if you go back to the result screen, you're not gonna uh, you're not you're not gonna see any changes. Why is that? That's because you also have to define the thing by using a map function. Okay. Let, let me show you how the map function actually works. So what you're gonna do first of all is, do you see this back tick here? Just select it up to this back tick here. Do you see this one here? Okay. Up to this point. Now cut the thing. Okay. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to write here one second. Uh, do you see this thing? Shop items data. Scroll down and you're going to write it shop items data here. Shop. Uh, there is it. Okay. Shop items data. Like this. Now, we're going to use a map function. Look at this. Dot map. Okay. Here is it. Now, guys, look at this. Inside this, we're going to write bracket. Okay. Now, put your mouse inside this bracket. We're going to make an ESX arrow function. Look at this. Brackets. Okay. Equal to angle bracket and then curly bracket there we go done now guys we're gonna pass an argument here okay you can write here anything you wish no problem okay for but for this tutorial i'm gonna make it very simple i'm gonna write here x so why did i write the x here the main reason is that this is map function here the map actually will target all the data one by one okay so which means that how many items are here Okay, tell me how many items are inside here four items four objects, which means that this map will run four times Okay, but if you have 100 data inside here, which means that the map will run 100 times Okay, and by writing this X it means that We are targeting all the items one by one one piece at a time. Let me show you don't worry Okay, so inside here. We're gonna write another return statement. Look at this read uh, sorry return like this okay now whatever you have cut you just paste the thing like this okay there we go save the thing okay now let's look at the result guys look at this there we go can you see this one here but guys guys one second it looks odd okay look at this one can you see this one and can you see this one here it looks odd that's because can you see this invisible comma here i can already see it here can you see this comma yeah it's coming okay so we have to remove this comma only then we can see the specific result in order to remove that comma. All right, guys, come back to your main JS and then you're going to scroll down. Okay. Do you see this ending curly bracket before this one? Okay. Do you see this one here? Just before this one, write dot join. Okay. Bracket, then double quote. Okay. Done. Save the thing. Let's look at the result. There we go. The comma are gone. But guys, look at this. The data did not get changed. Okay. But we want them to get changed automatically. How do we want the thing? We want the thing to get changed automatically. In order to do that, it's very simple, guys. Look at this. Do you remember the X that I wrote? You see, it means that we're targeting all of them one by one, one by one. So how many times uh, the map will run? First of all, tell me how many data we have. We have four data. So the map will run one by one. Uh, I mean, sorry, the map will run four times and all of them will run one by one. So now look at this. Do you see this X here? Let's just come here and do this casual shirt. Remove the casual shirt like this, okay? Now you're gonna write here dollar sign, curly bracket. Then you're gonna write here x dot. Why did I write the dot? Because it is actually an object. So what did I specify here? This is an object, right? 
that's why the x is object now look at this do you see this name here just copy the name okay scroll down and do you see this one here just paste the thing like this there we go done save the thing now let's look at the result okay uh, if you see this name then you're gonna see that the tags got changed look at this this is casual shirt this is office shirt this is t-shirt this is men's suit okay but the image didn't get changed look at this we're gonna do the same thing for the price look at this it's very simple look at this remove the 45 but re don't remove this dollar sign okay hit a space now write dollar sign curly bracket x dot uh what was it price right p r i e if you are not sure about spelling if you're not sure about the spelling just come here okay copy the spelling scroll down paste the thing here like this then save the thing okay now let's look at the result you see the price also got changed you see that brilliant now guys look at this can you see this every time you have to use the x you gotta write x dot x dot x dot that's annoying right so in order to prevent that we're gonna use something called destructuring okay it's very fun to use look at this so look look at this how many things do we have inside the object we have image we have name price description image okay so now in order to use all of them look at this i'm gonna destructure the thing okay so come here and then you're gonna write here let okay Oh, not here sorry guys my bad it should be actually inside here this is map here it should be inside the map okay so you're gonna write here let curly bracket equal to x okay now do you see these things here just copy them one by one okay copy them put it here and then you're gonna hit comma all right now let's get the name mm -hmm. paste the thing here get the price and also make sure to put a comma page the thing okay then lastly we have the description and the image so comma dsc comma img save the thing there we go now guys you don't have to write the x dot anymore okay so let's let's remove the thing like this okay let's remove the thing from here as well there we go let's look at the result so we got the exact same result okay by writing this line of code and also doing these changes by the way guys why do we write x dot x dot x dot here's a question you might have a question right so what is this this is an object right so in order to access the object we write it like this look a b c dot oh sorry oh sorry what was the name of the thing uh shop items data right so let's copy the thing so let's assume the thing is an object okay if you want to if you want to access the price you just write the object name and then you have to write the dot price like this okay that's why guys we had to write the x dot name because the thing is an object okay because we specify the thing here as an object okay i really hope that you understood up to this point and everything okay now guys i'm gonna remove the thing and then i'm gonna save it okay now guys do you see this um where's the, the image here's the image right copy the thing remove it from here okay source equal to dollar sign curly bracket page the thing done save it let's look at the result there we go can you see that now we have different images it looks just like our finalized project can you see that brilliant guys next up do you see this description here yeah we're gonna change the description in order to do that uh, we're gonna come back here and uh, we're gonna remove this one okay next up write dollar sign curly bracket oh sorry curly bracket and then you're gonna write here description d e s see done let's look at the result there we go guys okay we are successful up to this point and everything okay all right guys if you notice carefully then you can see that we use the image description price and the name but we didn't use the id okay we're gonna use the id inside the parent okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna write here id so we're gonna write here id okay equal to we're gonna write here product okay minus id minus dollar sign curly bracket id save the thing now let's look at the result okay so you're gonna come here and then you're gonna right click inspect okay now you're gonna go to your elements and then open the shop here's the shop okay now do you see this how many cards do you have four one two three four now you can notice that all of these cards got itself an id which is actually unique can you see this one here this is a unique id unique id unique id etc i really hope that you understood up to this point and everything okay at the same time guys let's come back here and you just copy the id from here scroll down do you see this quantity here yeah we're gonna put a id here as well look at this id equal to dollar cent curly bracket pays the thing okay the main reason for putting this thing here is that guys do you see this zero here yeah every time we increment the thing we're gonna target the id and then we're gonna increment the number 
at the same time every time you decrement the thing we're gonna target this one and then we're gonna decrement the thing don't worry guys we're gonna make this function right now so that you can have a practical feel of how the thing actually works okay all right guys so far so good now we're gonna make two functions the increment and the decrement function my main objective is that every time you click on the plus the number will increase okay at the same time every time you click on this one the decrement the number will change as well so we're gonna make two functions this will be increment this will be decrement okay and do you see this one here we're gonna make another function which will be called update which will which has only one function to update the number okay so let's get started okay so let's come back to our all right guys let's go back to our vs code inside the main js okay do you see this data here it's huge right we can fold this how do you fold this just come here click on the shaver okay done now it's more manageable okay now below this function what we're gonna write is two functions okay we're gonna make two functions increment decrement okay another function that we're gonna make is called update look at this follow along with me let it's gonna be es6 error function okay increment okay equal to this one arrow function here like this there we go done now this is responsible for increasing the number where is it this one okay and we're gonna make another function which will be called decrement okay copy paste decrement there we go okay another one will be called update something like this look there we go done okay now let me explain again the increment is res responsible for increasing the number decrement is responsible for decreasing the number and the update is responsible for updating this number here okay so far so good guys so guys i really hope that you understood why i wrote three functions okay let's go back to our functions all right now guys do you see this icon here yeah and do you see this icon here so you're gonna come here and then you're gonna write on click okay everything will be in small letter okay on click on c l i c k okay equal to double code okay now look at this this is the minus right every time you hit the minus which one should trigger this decrement should trigger right just copy the thing huh and then come back here and then page the thing like this okay now bracket there we go done at the same time do you see this increment here you can write here on click okay on click equal to double code okay now scroll down and do you see this uh, increment here copy the thing scroll up and now put it here like this bracket done now how do you test whether the thing actually works or not let me show you just come over here and then you're gonna write here console yeah dot log okay you're gonna write here increment there we go and now let's come back here and then write console log okay dot log decrement okay decrement there we go now let's test the thing okay let's come back to here uh, on the result screen and then we're gonna hit right click inspect okay now let's come to your console and now let's click on the plus like this there we go can you see this one here it's now increment okay now let's click on the minus that's decrement there we go okay so all the buttons are working let's test all of them okay there we go okay decrement increment so it's working perfectly fine okay guys here's the question how do you exactly know that which card you're selecting okay i can say that hey this is the sh formal shirt one i'm selecting this one you can visually see that but javascript javascript doesn't have any eyes how will it know that you're selecting exactly this one right here's the question so how do you exactly solve that it's very simple look at this just come over here and do you remember this id here yeah this is unique what is this this is unique using this id javascript can pinpoint which shop item you're specifically selecting okay that's why i wrote here id and i gave it unique id for all the things so that javascript can identify which item we are selecting okay now in order to select in order to do the same thing here look at this do you see this increment and decrement we're gonna pass an argument here how do you pass argument look at this you're gonna write here dollar sign curly bracket id okay in the same way you just come here write dollar sign curly bracket id done okay now listen guys scroll down here and instead of the increment you write here id okay save the thing let's test let's come back here f12 okay open the dev tools and click on the plus now guys you're gonna see a error id is not defined that's because every time you pass argument inside here you also have to define that inside here as well something like this look this is our argument okay save the thing now let's look at the result okay now it's gonna work there we go okay click on the plus it's working perfectly fine now can you see this one here what did it give us it returned us the quantity which is actually zero 
and now guys look at this there's this id here yeah it is unique let's click something else like this there we go you see this id is unique using this id we're gonna tell javascript that hey we are selecting this card here just decrement the number here or increment the number here only here don't touch other cards you got my point okay guys we want only the id nothing else so in order to do that just come back here and now let me uh, let's write a variable okay let selected item okay selected item okay and then you're gonna pass the id here like this there we go now copy the thing put it here okay save the thing let's look at the result okay so guys now let's look at the result if you click on here then you're gonna you're not you're not gonna see any changes so in order to see the changes look at this let's come back here and on the selected item just right here dot id okay dot id save the thing now if you come back here if you select on the plus like this there we go you're gonna see the unique only the unique id click on here this is the unique id okay click here unique id click here unique id done in the same way guys let's come back here yeah we're gonna pass the id here okay we're gonna do the exact same thing just copy both of these two lines yeah and then paste it here like this there we go done save the thing now look at this every time whatever you click whether it be the plus or the minus is gonna specifically pinpoint to the javascript that which item you're exactly selecting okay so far so good guys now listen the next thing that we're gonna build is we're gonna make a small basket okay look at this i'm gonna come here and then i'm gonna write here let okay basket okay equal to is gonna be a array like this now what's the reason for making the basket the main reason for making the basket is that one thing let me just uh, fold this code okay like this the main reason for writing the basket here is that every time you select any card okay what it's gonna do is gonna store the data inside our basket to tell specifically which items did we select it okay you got my point now let me show you an example let's say that we have selected this card okay so if you select on the plus what will happen is that look at this here a object will be generated okay inside this object we're gonna have two items stored look at this we're gonna write here id colon this will have the unique id okay and then comma we're gonna have a item here where the number will be just one which means that we have this item inside our basket and the quantity is just one piece okay every time you click on the plus something like this look every time i click on the plus like this so what will happen is this is 18 number 18 the number 18 will get added here at the same time so since you selected this thing so this thing will be existing in your basket by storing the id here let me show you a live demo look at this first of all i'm gonna remove the thing okay i'm gonna keep it blank like this look at this guys now i'm gonna scroll down here inside the increment okay now guys now guys inside the increment every time when the user clicks on the increment huh, this function will run which means that look at this here i'm gonna write basket okay basket dot push so what will i push inside here look at this okay bracket curly bracket we're gonna push two things first of all the id okay so do you see this id here selected item dot id copy the thing put it here like this okay now we're gonna put here comma now the next thing that you're gonna put is item okay colon now we're gonna put here one like this there we go save the thing now listen next thing that we're gonna do is instead of console logging the id we're gonna console log the basket look at this bsk okay save the thing guys now cut the thing from here like this Control x now put it after the push like this okay save the thing let's come back here guys open the console one second let's come here and open the console okay look at this every time you click on the plus look at this you're gonna have one item inside your basket this is your basket guys look at this. how many items do you have you have just one okay now if you open up this one you're gonna see that i you can see that the id got stored and then the item is one piece now guys look at this every time you click on the plus you can see the basket getting increased if you open up this one look at this the same item gets added again and again and again it doesn't make any sense guys instead of doing this thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the item number here if you click here three times the item will get changed to three okay that's our approach not this approach okay this doesn't make any sense it is just wasting our space here okay in order to make the thing look at this let's just come back to the main js okay 
Okay, guys, inside here, we're going to make a search function. Okay, the main objective of the search function is that it's going to search whether the thing actually exists on the basket or not. Let me show you. Okay, so look at this one, guys. How many items can you see here? One, two, three. We have three identical items. It doesn't make any sense, right? So the search function will search. Let's say that you selected this one. The search function will search whether this thing actually exists on the basket or not. If it exists, only the item will increase. Okay, the item will increase like one, two, three, four, five, etc. Okay, but if it doesn't exist, then what will happen is that we just push here. It's going to push a new object inside our basket and then we can see the object, okay? I really hope that you understood my point of view, okay? Let's make the thing, okay? Now look at this. You're going to come here and then you're going to make a let search, okay? Then you're going to write here equal to, you're going to select the basket like this, okay? Basket dot find, okay? One second. So using this find, we're going to search whether the thing, whether the object actually exists or not, okay? Now, inside here, you're going to write here bracket. Inside here, you're gonna write ES6 arrow function, something like this. Okay, guys. Now, look at this. We're gonna write here X. You can write here anything you wish, no problem, guys. So, for this tutorial, I'm just gonna pass X as an argument. Okay, the main reason for pass uh, for the main reason for passing this argument is that it's gonna check all the objects one by one. Okay, that's why I wrote this X. Now, inside here, what I'm gonna do is I will do this ID here, this is unique okay so i will just search for ids something like this look you're gonna come here and then you're gonna write here x dot id okay you're gonna write here triple equal to sign next up do you see this uh selected id yeah selected item dot id copy the thing put it here like this okay so what do i mean by this it is just searching for one thing one and only thing it is searching for the item that you selected and then we're just making a quick search does the thing actually exist or not next up guys look at this you're gonna make an if else statement look at this if huh bracket and then you're gonna write here search if the search is undefined look at this triple equal to sign and then you're gonna write here undefined like this okay guys what do i mean by this i mean by this is that if we don't find the thing that we're trying to search only then we're gonna push the object inside the basket so I'm gonna cut the thing and then put it inside here, okay? Else, like else, like what do I mean by else? If we find the thing, okay, then we're gonna do this. Look, else, curly bracket. You're gonna write here search. Uh, do this search here, copy the search, okay? Paste it here and then you're gonna write here plus, uh, oh, sorry guys, we also have to write the item, dot item, okay? Plus equal to, you're gonna write here one. Done, now, now guys, let's look at the result. Let's come back here and now look at this. If I select the plus, look at this. We're going to see only one object. Okay. Bear with me, guys. Now, guys, let's look at the logic. Okay. Look at this. If the thing doesn't exist, only then push the thing. If it already exists, just increase the quantity. Okay. So what will happen in our, in our case? If I select on the plus like this, then what will happen? Tell me, guys. Only the item will increase because we already have the ID. So, which function is responsible for searching for the thing? The search is responsible for finding the thing, okay? Let's come back here and now let's click on the plus. Look at that. Let's open up this one. There we go, guys. We have the ID and the item increased. Let's increase it again like this. There we go. Let's open up this one. There we go. You see, item is now three. Brilliant, guys. Now let's click on this one. Now, guys, one second. How many, how many objects can you see inside this array? Only one. Now, guys, tell me, does this thing exist inside the basket? Yes or no? It's a no. So you're going to click on the this. You're going to click on this. Now you can see that we have two objects inside here. This is the first one. This is the second one. And the item is only one piece. Let's increase the thing like this. Click on this one. There we go. The item now increased. So guys, I really, really, really hope that you understood how the logic actually works. Okay. In the same way, guys, we're going to make the decrement function. Can you see this one here? We're going to make the decrement function. So let's get started. So guys, the decrement function is more or less quite similar to the increment function. So follow along with me, guys. Just copy the entire thing like this. Okay. Like this. One second. Copy this and now come over here and delete this thing. Okay make it blank and then paste the thing here all right now guys this is plus here here we're gonna put a minus like this look okay done 
Okay, guys, after putting the minus here, let's look at the result, okay? So you're gonna see the result immediately. Now look at this. I'm gonna select here five times, okay? One, two, three, four, five, okay? Now let's open up this one. You can see the item five. Now let's decrement the thing like this. Look, one, two, three. Now the item should be how much? Two. There we go. It's working perfectly fine. Guys, now look at this. I'm gonna select it more times. Look at this. I'm just gonna click on the thing, okay? Now look at the result. If I open up the very last one, look at this. Now the item is minus 10. It doesn't make any sense, right? So what we're gonna do is we have to stop this thing from going below zero. In order to do the thing, follow along with me, guys. Just come over here and do you see this if statement here, yeah? Instead of the undefined, we're gonna write here zero. Okay, now here is gonna be search dot item, which means that one second, guys, one second. Let me just undo the things. Okay, one second. Where did I get the search dot item? You might have a question, right? So we actually got it from here. Can you see this one here? ID, and then we have something called item. So the moment the thing hits zero, okay, bear with me, guys. The moment the thing hits zero, we're gonna stop the process. So that's why I wrote search dot item equal to zero. Look at this search dot item. Yeah, instead of undefined, it's gonna be zero. Like this, there we go. And how do you stop the process? Look at this. Do you see these things here? Just remove the curly bracket like this, okay? And now just write here return. It's gonna stop the process completely like this. Your code should look something like this. Now guys, let's test the result, okay? Let's come back here on the result screen and look at this. I'm gonna select this, one, two, three. Let's look at the result. There we go, the item is now three. Let's decrement one, two, Let's look at the result. There we go. The item is one. The moment you click it again, look at this. It's going to become zero, right? Which means that if you click it again here, look at this. Even if you click on keep clicking the thing, look at this. It's not working. Even if I click it 100 times, it's not working. Why is that? That's because I completely stopped the process, okay? By writing this statement. The return statement means that just stop the thing. Don't do anything, okay? Just like this. So guys, I really, 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 really hope that you understood up to this point and everything, okay? So you can just pick any card here, just click on the thing, and then it's incrementing like this. And if you wanna decrement, just keep on, keep on decrementing. The moment it hits zero, look at this. The moment it hits zero, it's not gonna do anything anymore. But if you want to say, let's say, increment the thing, if you click on the plus, now it's gonna work, look at that. Click on the thing, now there we go, you see? Now it's one piece, okay? Now guys, the next thing that we're gonna do is, do you remember the update function? Where's the update? Here's the update function. We're gonna define the update function right now so that it gives us 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Just like the finalized project. You see this one? Keep on clicking, you can see the result live, okay? So let's do the same thing. In order to do the thing, let's come back to VS Code, scroll down, you see the update, we're gonna define the thing. So guys, first things first, when do you want the update function to run? We want the thing to run every time. One second. We want the thing to run every time we click on the plus or the minus. So let me just show you a sample. What do I mean by that, okay? So come here and then we're gonna write a console log, okay? Console.log, okay? We're gonna write here, the update function is running, okay? Now, since I told you, Every time we click on the plus or the minus, we want the update to run. So we'll do this, okay? Just copy the update. Now scroll up to your increment function first of all, okay? Do you see this one here? Console log basket. Before this one, just paste the thing like this, okay? Update bracket done. Now scroll down. Do you see this decrement here? After the console log, paste the thing bracket done. Save the thing. Now look at the result, guys. Let's come back here. Open the console, okay? Now every time you click on the plus. The update function is running, is working perfectly fine. Look at this. Whatever you click, however you click, the thing works, okay? All right, guys, instead of printing console log, we want to print the numbers here, okay? In order to do that, first of all, let's go back to our VS Code, okay? And now, first of all, let's define um, increment, okay? Inside the increment, do you remember the unique ID? Where's the unique ID? Here's the unique ID, okay? Just copy the unique ID, guys. Scroll down, do you see this update? Paste it here, okay? Selected item, then just pass the ID like this. Look, selected item dot ID. Okay, save the thing. Now let's come inside here and then just write an ID here like this. Okay, save the thing. Now instead of just doing the thing, remove this thing and then write ID. Okay, save the thing. Now initially let's look at the result. Okay, so instead of getting the update functions running, you're gonna see the unique ID. Can you see that? We're gonna get the unique ID. 
okay now guys where will this unique id lead us to let me show you the unique id has an attachment here if you open the generate shop can you see this unique id here yeah it has a direct attachment here which means that we can use document dot get element by id to replace this number directly look at this i'm gonna fold this thing scroll down to our update function do you see this one here first of all guys we're gonna make a quick search if and only if the item exists only then the number will increase okay guys we're back to our vs code now look at this we're gonna make a search function okay let search okay equal to look at this basket okay dot find then you're gonna write here bracket inside here you're gonna write es6 error function okay similar process the way how i it's a similar process guys the way how i made this search i'm gonna do it in the exact same process okay now do you see the way how i put the x here i'm gonna put the x here as well okay now what am i searching against i'm searching against the id look at this i'm gonna write here x dot id okay I'm gonna try to match with this ID. If it matches, okay, then we're gonna get some result. Look at this, okay? After writing this function, look at this. Just copy the search, okay? And then you put it here like this. There we go. And this is basket here. Comment the basket, okay? I mean the console log. Comment the console log here and comment the console log here as well. Now, oh, sorry, not this one, my bad. It should be this one, okay? Comment the thing. Save it, let's look at the result okay guys let's come back to the vs code and now every time you click on the plus you're gonna see a object on the console okay where is this coming from look at this it is coming from the update function do you see the console log it's coming from there okay now if you click on incrementing incrementing the thing can you see the item getting increased again and again and again right so we only want the number we don't want the id okay so how do we only target the id in order to only target the id just come here and then write search dot item done save it let's look at the result every time you click on the plus look at this only the number will increment okay now we don't want this thing to be here we want the thing to be inside the zero here how do you do it look at this just come back here and then you simply write document okay dot get element by id and do you remember this id yeah copy the thing and then put it here like this okay then you can write here dot inner html equal to search dot item which is actually this one do you see this number i mean do you see this uh, console log it is printing number one two three four five etc just copy the thing and put it here like this done guys look at this let's come back here every time you click on the plus look at this can you see the number it's live it's working perfectly fine look at this number is working how many items are here eight how many items are here here and here zero 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 let's increment this one there we go guys it's working perfectly fine at the same time guys let's try to decrement the thing if you click on here look at this it's not working okay the decrement doesn't work but the increment works okay why is that that's because we need to define the thing here as well do you see this update which is actually on the decrement it's not defined we need to define it just like the way we defined it on the increment it's very simple guys just copy the thing yeah and then put it here and then put a dot here like this dot id save the thing let's look at the result there we go okay let's increment this one one two three four five six let's decrement there we go guys it's working perfectly fine you see there we go guys brilliant okay now what the next thing that i want is guys every time you increment the thing okay what will happen is this is numbers here three eight and seven so what will happen is we're going to add all the numbers together and then we're going to display it on here. So since currently is what? It is zero. So we're going to add all the numbers and then we're going to put it here just like this one. Look at this. Okay. So if you add all the numbers, it's going to be 23. You see, if you decrement the thing, it's working here. If you increment the thing like this, look, it's working here as well. Let's make that function, guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back here and do you see these unnecessary comments? You can delete it. Or you can just keep it no problem okay so at the very bottom you're gonna make a function you're gonna name the function calculation look at this let oh sorry let calculation this will be es6 error function okay something like this there we go so guys what are we gonna do using this function we're gonna add all the numbers do you see these numbers here we're gonna add all the numbers and we're gonna display it where we're gonna display it inside here okay okay guys here's the question 
when and how should the calculation function run if you notice carefully guys so whatever you do whether you do the plus or the minus the update function runs every time right so i want the thing i mean i want the calculation function to run only when the update function gets triggered okay so in order to do this thing just copy the thing okay and then trigger the thing here like this there we go done so listen so what will happen let me just show you a sample okay so i'm gonna write here console log okay console.log and then here we're gonna write here calculation uh, calculation function is running okay now save the thing now listen every time the update function gets triggered the calculation function will get triggered as well something like this look first of all do this is console log remove it or make a comment okay save the thing now guys let's look at the result okay let's come back here open the console right click inspect okay now every time you click on the plus look uh, first of all let's go to the console okay every time you click on the plus or the minus look at this can you see this one here the number is getting updated one and then we're getting this calculation function is running we're getting this comment from where we're getting it from the calculation function which is this one okay which means that this thing is working perfectly fine okay now guys we need to select this thing do you see this zero one second do you see this zero here we need to target the zero so how do i target this look at this okay guys let's go back to our index html here and then open the nav bar so do you see this here we have something called cart amount okay it is a class we want it to be an id so that we can easily target that inside javascript just copy the same thing yeah and then you put your id equal to double quote okay now paste the thing done okay guys now copy the thing again let's come back to our main js okay now inside the calculation look at this i'm gonna write here let huh? let cart icon cart icon equal to we're gonna write document oh sorry document dot get element by id bracket double quote paste done so what we're doing is we're selecting our icon here and then we're storing the selection inside a variable so far so good guys now instead of this one look at this what i'm gonna do i'm gonna write here cart icon dot inner html equal to i'm gonna write here 100 as an example guys look at this okay so now if i open up the results can look at this how much is this one it's just zero look at this every time you click on the plus it's now 100 but if i click it again it's not gonna work okay how do i make it work so look at this i don't want it this is called hard coded value i don't want this guys no no no. i don't want this look at this i'm kind of i'm gonna come here and then i'm gonna write here console log okay console dot log okay now inside here i'm gonna write basket okay b-a-s-k-e-t basket save the thing let's go back here and open the console like this okay now look at this let's select this one select this one okay select these things and select this thing now if i open up this basket look at this how many things do i have here i have one two three four i have four items in my basket do you see the item guys look at this two four three four what do i want i want to add all the numbers okay so in order to add all the numbers what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna select only the item what i'm doing i'm gonna target only the item not i don't need the id i'm gonna return only the item how do i do this look at this guys just come back here and we're gonna use the map function look at this basket right we're gonna write a dot map okay bracket we're gonna write here a es6 arrow function like this now we're gonna pass an argument x which means that it's gonna target all the objects one by one how many objects do we have here one two three four four objects right the x will target all of them one by one and it's gonna get only the item look at this so in order to specify only the item you just write here x dot item okay item done guys save it now let's look at the result one second click on here okay click on here like this take this one take this one now guys can you see this we are only getting the number nothing else okay we are getting only the number this is three here the three is here do you see the four the four is here this is five the five is here and the three is here now guys we're gonna use a reduce function to add all the numbers follow along with me guys come back here and now after uh, this one we're gonna write here dot reduce look at this r e d u c e reduce okay now write bracket so you're gonna write here another es6 error function like this look huh 
And now, guys, you're gonna pass two arguments here. One will be x, and another one will be called y. So why did I write x and y? The main reason for writing the x and y is that x and y, one of them is the previous number, and the other one is the next number, which means that, one second, so how does the calculation work? Look at this. First of all, let's consider the three as x, okay? So the three, what it will do is, is gonna add the three with four. So how much is three plus four? It's gonna be seven, okay? So this will be the previous number. What's the next number of the, after seven? It's three. So seven plus three, how much? 10, okay? So what's the next number? It's five. So uh, say 10 plus five is how much? 15. That's how this thing will run, okay? I really hope you understood how the reduce function should actually work. Now look at this. We're gonna write here x plus y. Now, optionally, you're gonna put here comma and then zero. The zero means it is a default number, which means that we want the calculation to start from zero, okay? Save the thing. Now, guys, let's look at the result. Now, let's come back here and then write one, two, three, four, five. Can you see this five here? We have five items. Now, let's come here and then we add three items. One, two, three, three. There we go. Can you see this eight here? Five plus three, how much eight? The calculation is working perfectly fine. Let's add more things. There we go. Let's decrease something. There we go. It's working perfectly fine, guys. But, guys, we don't want the thing to be on the console. We want it to be here, just like our finalized project, okay? In order to put the number here, very simple, guys. Come back here. Do this cart icon here. Yeah. Copy the thing. Come back here. Paste the thing, okay? Then you're going to write here dot inner HTML equal to, do you see this console here? Yeah cut the thing okay put it here and remove the console from here like this there we go guys done save it let's look at the result let's close this one now let's increase the thing okay there we go you see seven items here seven items here let's increase it to three like this ten items here let's try to decrement the thing like this look at this there we go you see it's working perfectly fine guys okay so we are successful up to this point and everything but guys here's the thing do you see this number? It's seven, it's one and one, it's nine. The moment you refresh the thing, all data are gone. Can you see that? But if you look at the final project, look at this. Even if you refresh the page, it's not going away. Okay, do you see this one here? I'm refreshing the thing again and again and again. It's not going away. How is this possible? I am using something called local storage. If we use local storage, then we can save this data. Look at this. If I hit uh, F12 and if I go to this uh, here, there's something called application, okay? Now, one second, guys. Let me zoom in. Do you see this local storage? There's something called storage, okay? This is the built-in storage of your Chrome, of your web browser. If you come over to the storage on the local storage, you click on this one and now look at this. All the data got stored inside here, okay? Even if you refresh, nothing will happen. Look at this. Can you see this one here? Zero. ID is this one. The item is five. So let's find that one, which is actually this one. Can you see this one here? The how many how many items are here? There are five items. Now, if you make a minus, look at this. Can you see that the number is changing here? If you increment the thing, look at this. The item is getting updated at the same time it is getting saved here as well. However you like, you refresh the thing, it's still there. It will never go away because the thing is getting saved in the local storage. So guys, we're gonna implement the same functionalities in our project right now. So let's get started. Okay guys, after refreshing it, you can see a fresh instance of this app, okay? Every time you click on the plus like this, okay? Look at this. Now, what do I exactly want to save in the local storage? Look at this, okay? We have a lot of data here, right? I want, specifically, I want to push the basket inside the local storage, okay? So that the browser remembers which item I picked up, just like this one, you see? So do you see these things here? Yeah. These things are actually where inside the basket, okay? When I use the local storage, the basket got saved inside there. We're gonna use the exact same principle right now, okay? So when do you when do we want to trigger the local storage? Listen, every time you click on the plus or the minus, we're gonna trigger the local storage. Something like this. Look, let's come back here. Yeah, now scroll down. Uh, give me a second. Where's the increment? So guys, you're gonna come here on the increment function, okay? Here. Uh, before the update, you're gonna write here local storage. Look at this local storage dot. If you hit dot, then you're gonna see a lot of functions here. You see, get item, set item, remove item, clear. Okay, we're gonna use set item. 
it is used to set the item inside the local storage i mean setting data inside the local storage and the get item is used to get data from the local storage okay and the clear is used to delete everything now look at this now look at this inside the set item we're gonna have two things look at this first of all we're gonna have a double code now inside here you can give any name you wish no problem but let's keep it simple okay i'm gonna name it data okay so this is actually the name that's that gets saved in your local storage let me show you so if you look at the finalized project let's f12 and then go to the application do you see this key here the data that's because i gave it a name of data that's the key if you write let's say your own name let's say that i'm gonna write here joy okay if i do that what will happen is that the key will get named joy and then all the values will get saved here okay so guys i really hope that you understood why i wrote the uh, name here okay this is the key so i'm just gonna, i'm just gonna keep it simple i'm gonna write here data like this there we go now you're gonna put a comma here and then you're gonna pass the basket like this okay B A S K A T basket save the thing let's look at the result guys come back here and then this is our uh project okay f12 to open the dev tools and now go to the application if you can't find it just click on here and then you're gonna find something called application okay now next up we're gonna come to the storage on the local storage open up this one okay like this there you go can you see this one here guys the data is the key okay if you change the name just do it like this look you just change the name here okay that is the key and this is the object that is getting stored okay look at this the data is here i mean the key is here and the value is here now if you click on this one then you can see all the details here currently there are no properties now look at this if you click on the plus look at this guys what is getting stored something is getting stored here we can't read it so guys if you want to read the thing what's exactly written here just like this one just like this one so what you're gonna do guys look at this follow along with it there's something called json.stringify okay just cut the thing okay cut it you gotta write here json.stringify okay now bracket paste the thing like this there you go save the thing now let's look at the result uh let's come here and now refresh the thing okay so now let's click on here and then delete the thing okay now click on the plus like this there we go okay we got something here just click on this one there we go you see the data got saved here now look at this we have the one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so you have ten here the 10 is here as well let's try to decrease the thing if you decrease the thing you can see the value is not getting updated why is that that's because guys the local storage exists only on the increment not on the decrement to do that just copy the thing yeah come here and put it before the update okay put it here like this there we go done save the thing let's go back and now look at this the local storage right now is how much it's 10 right let's try to decrement the thing okay guys now let's test the result okay first of all you're gonna delete the thing okay like this now let's try to increment the thing there we go you see you got you got a data click on this one and then you're gonna find this okay now let's try to increment the value look at this click 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 and then you can see that the item gets incremented do you want to decrement a thing sure why not let's decrement a thing like this there we go it is working perfectly fine you see let's add something like this let's add something like this like this as well okay if you click on here then you can see all the details here okay guys we're successful up to this point and everything now guys the moment you one second look at this there's this three here and the eight here the moment you refresh everything goes away but still hey guys look at this the data is still saved here so our main task right now is we have to retrieve the data from the local stores into our application okay in order to do that it's very simple just come over here so guys in order to retrieve the data so what what are we doing here we're just setting the item inside the local storage now we're gonna retrieve the data in order to retrieve the data just come to the very top okay do you see this basket here yeah we're gonna remove the thing now in order to get the thing from the local storage you have to write json.parse okay JSON dot parse like this. Now you're gonna write a bracket. Now inside the bracket you're gonna write a local storage. Okay, local storage dot get item. Previously it was set item. Now it is get item. Now guys, you're gonna write here a bracket. Now guys, you tell me what was the name of the key that you gave? The name of the key is data, right? You're gonna get the data here like this. Look, you're gonna write here double quote. Okay, you're gonna write here data. Now the data will get retrieved, and then guys, we're gonna write an or statement here. Okay or 
and then we're gonna write here a empty array like this so why did i write this what's the reason for this okay look at this guys so we have data inside our local storage what do we have we already have the data but what if we don't have any data what if we don't have any data then it's gonna be error which means that it's gonna break our application in order to stop preventing from happening that what we have to write is we're gonna give an or statement and then we're gonna give here an empty array which was previously inside here do you remember how it was like it was let basket equal to empty array okay so if we have local data it's gonna retrieve that if we don't have it then it's gonna be only an empty array so i really hope that you understood up to this point and everything okay let's save the thing now guys let's come back to the result screen and look at this it is zero here and it is four on the local storage right in the moment you hit only one time it's gonna be five right now okay this is the five here and this is the five here now look at this if you refresh it again it's gonna start from zero if you click here one time it's gonna be six this is the behavior that we don't want okay in order to prevent that and in order to update all the things all together what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to your template do you remember the template where is the template here's the template okay just open up this one now look at this guys below this one we're gonna make a quick search okay we're gonna write here let okay search okay let me actually explain why did i write this search and why i'm making a search function here okay so after saving the thing let's go look at the result screen okay look at this so what do i want look at this how many objects are actually inside here two objects okay the first one is six and the second one is actually three and the other ones are actually zero okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna search specifically for the id and the item if the id already exists on the local storage just get the six and put the six here if it doesn't exist then do nothing okay that's why i wrote a search function here okay now let's define the thing okay so you're gonna write here equal to then you're gonna write here basket okay basket dot find bracket and then you're gonna write here an arrow function you're gonna pass here x okay look at this x dot id so what we're matching against we're matching against the id so you're gonna write triple equal to sign and then do you remember this id here yeah just pass the id here so it's gonna check for all the id one by one okay guys now we can write an or statement here look at this or an empty array so what do i mean by that i mean by that is that if we can find something then store it here okay if we don't find anything just return an empty array okay so far so good guys all right guys copy this search scroll down and do this zero here remove the zero and then you're gonna write here a dollar sign curly bracket okay put the search here okay so what do i want to search tell me i want to search for the item only i don't want the id so what i'm gonna do look at this uh let me just go back there and now i'm gonna write here search dot item okay like this okay if the search dot item is equal to undefined which means that if we don't find it then we're gonna only return zero but if we find it then we're gonna return search dot item something like this there we go done save the thing let's look at the result okay so this is the result look at this automatically we got the six and the three even if you refresh the thing look at this it still works can you see that six is here three is here let's put here five one two three four five something like this refresh the thing there we go this five is still already there but nothing is and now nothing is getting deleted this is the result that we exactly want and now guys look at this even if we refresh the page nothing goes away you just increment the thing like this and then you decrement the thing like this there we go it's, nothing is going away the only problem is with this one look at this how much is this 12 right refresh the thing like this it's it goes away to zero but if you increase the thing look at this three right increase it like this now it's gonna be 13 you see that's the only issue that we have to fix very simple guys the solution is very simple come back to your main js scroll down and then do you see this one here just copy this one and then invoke it one time like this done so what do i mean by this i mean by this is that every time the application loads this will run so which means that it's gonna do a quick calculation and then it's gonna print the data here so look at this even if i refresh the page look at this the, the 13 still stays there let's try to increment the number look at this 17 let's try to decrement the thing like this or perhaps let's increment even further it's 24 right now refresh the page there we go done 
So far so good guys, we have successfully implemented the local storage feature into our application. Alright guys, before moving forward, we have some problem in our code which we need to fix. For an example, look at this. If I put my mouse over here, the cursor doesn't change to pointer compared to the finalized project. Look at this. If I put my mouse here, the cursor change, changes to pointer, okay? In order to solve that issue, just come back to your uh, style CSS at the very top, okay? Below the body, you're gonna write here I. Okay, so uh, what I'm doing is I'm targeting all the icon HTML elements, okay? And then I'm setting to setting the property to curve point, okay? Curve point tab, cursor pointer. Save the thing. Now let's look at the result, okay? So every time you put your mouse here, the cursor changes to pointer. Brilliant. Okay, guys, the next problem is actually with the minus button, okay? So the problem is the minus button shows an error on the console every time the local storage is blank. Let me show you what I mean by that, okay? So guys, you're gonna right click, you're gonna hit inspect, okay? Come over to your local application, local storage like this. Now do this guys, click on here, delete the entire thing. So now refresh the page, go back to the console and now click on the minus. Can you see that guys, we're having an error. So guys, why is this happening? Let me show you. So you're gonna go to your main JS on the decrement function, okay? The error is actually coming from here. Why is the error coming? Let me tell you. Since guys, the local storage is blank, which means that the basket is also blank. If the basket is blank, you cannot find anything, which means that eventually the search will be undefined. And in order to handle the undefined, we don't have any if else statement, right? So that's why the error is coming. In order to stop the error, you're gonna write another if statement here, okay? Then you're gonna write here search equal to undefined, okay? Then you're gonna just return the thing. So what do I mean by this line? I mean by this line is that every time when the search is undefined, then do nothing, okay? Now this line will stop the process. And guys, do you see the second line? You just write here else if, okay? Something like this, else if, and then save the thing, done. Now let's look at the error, okay? So first of all, make sure that your uh, local storage is blank, okay? Now let's go back to the console, now click on the minus. There we go, guys, there is no error right now, brilliant. Now guys, let's move on to the third problem. So in order to demonstrate the third problem, first of all, add something on your card, okay? Add something like this, okay? There we go. Now guys, do this. Go to your inspect and then go back to your local storage like this, okay? Now, what is this actually? Tell me what is this? This is our basket, okay? So it's gonna show us which products we selected along with the specific quantity that we selected, okay? This is what? This is the quantity. Okay, so let, as an example, let's say that I don't want anything from here. I don't want this shirt, zero quantity. Let's make it zero like this. So I made it zero, which means that I removed the thing from my basket. Even though you can see a zero, you can see some data here that is getting stored, okay? So guys, there is no point in keeping something on the basket which has a quantity of zero. It doesn't make any sense. So we need to remove this line, okay? Which line? We have to remove this zero. So guys, in order to do that, just come back to your VS code on the decrement function, okay? Guys, come back to the main JS on the decrement function, okay? Follow along with me, guys. Look at this, what I'm doing. I'm gonna write here basket, okay? Equal to, I'm gonna write the basket again, and then I'm gonna use the filter function. Look at this. I'm gonna write here dot filter, okay? Something like this. Now you're gonna write here bracket. Inside here, you're gonna write an ESX arrow function like this, okay? And inside the argument, you can pass anything you wish, no problem. But for this tutorial, let's make it simple. I'm gonna pass here X, okay? Now, what are we filtering against? Look at this, we are filtering against the item, right? So now, we're gonna select the X dot item like this. Don't worry guys, let me, I'm gonna explain this. First of all, let's write the entire statement, okay? So X dot item, okay, not equal to zero. Okay guys, now let me explain the meaning of this statement. Do you see this basket here? What is this and what does it actually carry? Let's keep it side by side with our local storage and VS code, okay? The basket on the local storage is actually an array, okay? Inside this array, it carries all the products that we selected from the store, right? And next up, we have applied a filter function here. So what do I mean by this X of the filter function? Do you see this here? We have how many objects here? We have four objects, one, two, three, four. So through the X of the filter function, I mean that target all of these objects one by one, one by one, okay? Next up, what we're checking is against the item. So look at this individual object here. How many things can you see here? 
we have two things, ID and the item. We don't need the ID. We only need to check the item, okay? So that's why I have written this x.item. And what do I mean this entire line? x.item is not equal to zero. Through this, I mean that we're gonna select all the objects which, which doesn't have a zero on the item. So guys, you tell me how many objects do we have on which the item is zero? Only one object which has an item of zero, which means that this filter will remove this object and then it's gonna return the other things. So guys, once the filter function returns the filter data, what we're doing next is that we're setting the, we're setting the data back to the basket. So guys, do you see this line here? We're gonna cut the thing and then we're gonna put it at the bottom like this, okay? So why did I do such a thing? That's because do you know the mechanics of JavaScript? JavaScript runs from the top to the bottom like this, okay? Now guys, let's analyze our code. What are we doing using these lines? Using these lines, we're manipulating, I mean, we're editing data of our basket which carries all the products that we selected. And what are we doing with the local storage set item? Using this line, what we're doing is we're saving those data of the basket inside the local storage. So the main reason for putting these things at the top and this one at the bottom is that we want JavaScript to run these lines of code, first of all, so that we can have the necessary edits and changes on the data of our basket. So once that's done, what we want JavaScript to do next is that we want it to save all the data, I mean save all the edited, updated data back to the local storage like this. So if I cut the thing from here, and then if I put it at the top like this, then there's, then guys, it doesn't make any sense. What does it mean? So JavaScript, what, we, what it will do is whatever basket data you have, JavaScript will just save the thing, first of all. And then it's gonna do all the edits, which means that guys, you cannot see the updates on the local storage. That's why guys, we have put the local storage at the bottom like this, okay? So guys, I really hope that you understood why I wrote this at the bottom. In the same way, you're gonna open the increment function here, and then do you see this local storage here? You just cut the thing from here like this, and then put it at the bottom like this, okay? Save the thing, there we go, done. Now guys, let's inspect our code, okay? Let's just fold it first of all. Now guys, save the thing, inspect the code, okay? So now we have a zero here, right? Let's refresh the thing, let's see whether it works or not. So first of all, let's delete the data, okay? Refresh the thing again. And then let's select something here like this, okay? Uh, select something here, there we go. Then select on this one, you can see the data here. All right, guys, now let's test the result. Do you see this four here? It's actually here, okay? Every time you click on the plus, it works, okay? If you click on the minus, the minus also works. So let's go and make it zero like this, okay? Three, two, one, it should be zero, right? It doesn't work, but instead it's giving us error. Why does it actually happen? That's because of the serial, look at this, guys. Do you see this one here? That's because of the serial. So we want the update to run first, and then we want this line to run. Okay, so since it is in the opposite direction, that's why we can't see the changes. So in order to fix that, guys, just cut the thing from here, Control X, put it here like this, okay? There we go. Now, guys, save the thing, and then let's look at the result, okay? Now, let's come here and then refresh the thing. Now, how many things can you see here? Just one piece, okay? Click on here, done. Now it's zero. At the same time, it removed the object from our basket. Brilliant. Let's test it here. It's three. Two, one, zero, gone. Can you see that? Let's test this one as well. Four, three, two, one, zero. There we go, guys. We are successful up to this point. All right, guys, so far so good. Now we're gonna make the cart page, okay? So let's look at the finalized project. The cart page should look something like this. Can you see this? So let me give you a small demo. This will be the total bill, okay? Then we're gonna have two options, either the checkout option or the clear card. So what this will do is it's gonna delete everything from here. Next up, do you see this little cards here? This represents all the items that we selected from the shop page, all right? And now look at this one. This is the unit price, okay? The price of one single piece. This is the quantity and this is the total price. And this total price is actually calculated by multiplying this 45 by two. So if you click on the plus, you can see that the price increased here at the same time the total bill increased here like this. Let's test again like this, look at that, okay? 
You can also decrement the thing like this. There we go. Let's say that you don't want the thing. So you can just click on the cross here like this and it's gonna entirely remove the thing like this. There we go, okay? Something like this, look at that. Now let's say that you don't want anything. You don't want to buy anything. You just click on the clear card. It's gonna remove everything and then it's gonna show you an option called cart is empty. Cart is empty, you can go back to the home. Something like this, there we go. You see, now let's start building the cart page. All right guys, in order to make the cart page, let's go back to our VS code, okay? And on the folder structure, let me zoom in a little bit so that you can see it better. Here, we're gonna create a new file. We're gonna name it cart.html, okay? Cart.html, something like this, okay? Now guys, follow along with me. We're gonna create a folder, we're gonna name it source. So the main objective of creating this folder is that we're gonna store all of our style sheet and JavaScript file inside here, okay? So that we can manage our folder structure in a neat and clean way, okay? So guys, follow along with me, okay? Just drag the main JS here and the style CSS here like this, okay? So since guys, we changed the folder structure here, we have to go back to the index.html, okay? And do you see this links here? This one and this one here, we have to, we have to update this, otherwise we can see something like this. Can you see this one here? So in the, our project, no JavaScript and no style sheet got applied because we updated the folder structure here. So we have to make those updates here as well. So come here and then write source slash, save the thing. Scroll down to the, your script here. You're gonna write here source slash main j. Save the thing, now let's look at the result. If everything goes well, you should see something like this, you see? All right guys, perfect. Let's go back to our folder structure here. Do you see this index HTML? For this page, we have this main.js file. And for the cart HTML, we're gonna have another file. We're gonna name it cart.js, something like this, okay? Now guys, let's go back to our cart HTML. Here, we're gonna write some boilerplate code, okay? Something like this, exclamatory sign, tab, done. Now guys, we don't have to write anything from scratch. We just copy paste lines from the index HTML, okay? So come back to the index HTML, scroll up. Do you see these three lines here? This is the bootstrap icons. This is the, this is the link for the style CSS. And this is the title tag, okay? Just copy the three lines, something like this, okay? Copy the thing, let's go back to our cart HTML and then replace the thing with this, okay? There we go, done. Now guys, here we're gonna write the script, source, control space. You're gonna go to your source and then you're gonna select the cart JS, okay? Save the thing, guys. Okay, guys, this is the finished project. Can you see this navbar here? This is the cart page. If you go back to the home page, you can see the same navbar here, which means that we don't have to build anything from scratch. We can just copy paste the thing inside our cart page. But guys, look at this. Can you see this one here? If I click on here, it goes to the cart page. If I click on here, it goes back to the home page. This is the navigation. And in order to build that, we're gonna use the anchor tags. So let's implement those things in our project. So guys, you're gonna go to your index HTML first, okay? Now, in order to do the navigation part, you're gonna hit here A, tab, okay? Control space. It should lead us back to the home page, okay? Cut this H2 tag from here, and then we're gonna paste it here like this, all right? Now let's make another anchor tag which will lead us to the cart page, okay? Something like this, there we go. Now inside here, what you're gonna do is do this div here, just copy the entire thing. I mean cut the entire thing, then paste it here, okay? Save the thing, guys, now do this. You just close the nav bar here like this, copy the entire thing, go back to the cart HTML. Now inside the body tag, paste the, entire, paste the entire thing, okay? Then you can also fold it like this, save the thing, okay? Now guys, let's look at the result, okay? If everything goes well, it should look something like this. Can you see this one here? It looks odd. It was previously white in color, but why is that? That's because the anchor tag actually have some default styles, which we, we, need, which we need to remove. So come back to your style CSS at the very top here, okay? Below the I tag, we're gonna write here A curly bracket, okay? TD tab, text decoration none. And then we're gonna set the color to white, okay? Something like this. There we go, guys. Now let's look at the result. So it should look something like this, okay? Now guys, look at it. We can navigate between the cart page like this. We can also go back to the home page. There we go, guys. So far, so good. But guys, there's a little bit of problem. Can you see this number here? It's 15, one five. But if you go to the cart page like this, it's zero. Why is this actually happening? Let me tell you. The main reason is that this is cart JS page is totally blank. It doesn't have any data. That's why we are seeing a zero here. 
so guys in order to fix that thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this guys do you remember our local storage here let me show you we have all the data saved here what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this data inside our card js okay so guys we don't have to write anything from scratch let's just go back to the main js okay now do you see this line here let basket equal to this one so it is already doing a job of pulling data from the local storage so what is this this is trying to pull data from the local storage if we don't have anything only then it's gonna return us an empty array okay so guys let's just copy the thing and now let's go back to the card page paste the thing done now in order to be sure whether the thing whether the thing actually works or not just console log the thing okay console.log okay we're gonna write here basket something like this save the thing guys now let's look at the result okay so if you go to the console here you should see data coming back from the local storage something like this but guys the 15 the number 15 is not here if we go back to the home page the 15 is here but actually not here so in order to solve that issue guys do you remember that we created a function inside main.js its name was calculation do you remember this so what's the job of this calculation tell me guys the main job of the calculation function is that let's go back to our uh, this is the card page okay so now let's open up this data the main job of the calculation function is that this is items here it got some number okay so what the calculation function will do is that it's gonna add all the numbers okay and then it's gonna show it here so guys in order to solve this issue let's go back to our uh, main js okay here let's copy the entire calculation function along with this statement okay just copy the thing let's go back to our card js and then paste the thing here now guys we don't need this one anymore let's remove the thing save the thing guys now guys let's look at the result if everything goes well then you can see 15 here if you go back you have the 15 here okay let's select something else let's say that we're gonna select these things up to let's say 15 okay now you can see that previously it was 15 now it's 30 it's 30 right now if you click on here then you can see that the thing also got updated along with the home page Next up, guys, go back to your VS Code on the main JS, and then you're gonna scroll to the very top. Do you see this variable here? This variable name is shop items data. What is this actually? This is an array which carries all the data of the products that are listed on the shop page. We can also create a separate file for this gigantic data. In order to do that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna first of all fold the thing, okay? Then cut the thing from here, okay? now on the folder structure look at this inside the source click here then you're gonna create a new file you're gonna name it data.js something like this then you're gonna hit enter the variable that you have cut you're gonna paste it here like this okay let me zoom out a little bit i'm gonna scroll up do you see this one here it got here save the thing guys now if you look at the result screen you can see that the entire thing broke down something like this you see shop items data is not defined so in order to include this data js back into the main js do you know what you're gonna do you're gonna go to your index html and do you see this line here before this one you're gonna include it like this look script source okay one second script source control space you're gonna go to your source then you're gonna select data js okay save the thing now let's look at the result guys now guys look at that we have no errors so guys i really hope that you understood how i broke down a big file into two different smaller files okay in the same way what we are gonna do is you're gonna go to your cart html okay and before this line you're gonna include the same script something like this look script source control space go to your source then you're gonna select data.js save the thing okay all right guys now we're gonna start writing the html markup inside our body tag okay so below this nav bar we're gonna create a div with the id label something like this look hashtag label okay at the same time it's gonna have a class name of text center dot text minus center tab there we go our main objective is to target this inside javascript and to target this one inside style css okay below this line we're gonna create another div with a class name shopping cart look at this dot shopping minus cart okay at the same time we're gonna give it a id of the identical name something like this look hashtag shopping okay minus cart tap there we go we're gonna target this in javascript this will be targeted inside style css now guys you might ask me a question like what's the main reason for creating this one and the main reason for creating this one let me show you guys if we go back to the finalized project here okay let's go to the cart page 
Now, do you see this component here, the total bill and the checkout clear card? This component will be actually built inside here. And do you see this one here? Inside here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build these cards here. So guys, I really hope that you understood why I created these two divs, okay? We're not gonna write anything inside these two divs. We're gonna create these two components using JavaScript. So first of all, do this guys. First of all, do this ID here. We're gonna select both of them inside the JavaScript, okay? First of all, target the label, okay? Let's go back to our card JS and at the top, what you're gonna do is you're gonna write here let label, okay? Since this is, this is an ID, you're gonna write here document, okay? Document dot get element by ID. You're gonna write bracket, single quote or double quote, paste the thing, okay? Done. Next step, you're gonna write here let shopping card, okay? Shopping card equal to document dot get element by ID, okay? Bracket, single quote or double quote like this. Let's go back to our card HTML. Then you're gonna copy this one. Do you see this ID here? Yeah. Copy the thing. Let's go back here and paste the thing like this. There we go. Done. Okay, guys. So far, so good. Now, guys, do you see this one here? On the finalized project, we have all the cards here, okay? We're gonna target. We're gonna build this one first of all. And then we're gonna build this one later on, okay? So in order to build all of these cards, we're gonna create a function. The functional name will be generate card items. Follow along with me, guys. Below the calculation, we're gonna write here, let generate, generate card items, okay? This is gonna be an ES6 arrow function, something like this, okay? Then we're gonna write curly bracket. Okay, guys, listen to me carefully. Inside this function, we're gonna have two cases. The first case is when we will have data on the basket. And the second case is when we will have no data on the basket. Let me show you what do I mean by that. First of all, save the thing, okay? Let's go back to the finalized project, okay? So look at this, guys. This is the first case when we have some data on the local storage. Let's say that we don't have any data. So if we have data on the local storage, then the thing will look something like this. But if we don't have any data on the local storage, then what will it, then what will it look like? It will look something like this. Look, if I clear the card, then it's going to look like this, okay? Cart is empty, back to home. So in order to generate both of these two components together, we're going to use the if else statement, okay? In order to do that, let's come back to the card JS and inside here, we're going to write an if else statement. Look at this, guys, follow along with me. So guys, we're going to write an if else statement here, okay? If bracket, curly bracket, okay? On the next line, we're going to write else, curly bracket, okay? So inside this bracket, you're going to write basket.length, okay? Is not equal to zero. Okay, so what do I mean by this if else statement? By this, I mean that when the basket length is not equal to zero, you're gonna write, you're gonna run this code. Else, you're gonna run this code, okay? So let's test the result, okay? So we're gonna write here console log, okay? Console.log, okay? We're gonna write here basket is not empty, okay? And now inside this else statement, we're gonna write console log, okay? Console.log. We're gonna write here basket is totally empty, okay? Now, after saving the result, just copy this thing. And then we're gonna invoke the function here, okay? Now, bracket, save the thing, let's look at the result, okay? So this is our result screen here. You're gonna go to the cart HTML page, okay, like this. Can you see this one here? It is written basket is not empty. But guys, let's go to the application local storage, okay? Let's clear the entire thing. Now let's refresh the thing, go back to the console, okay? You can see that basket is totally empty. So guys, I really hope that you understood how this if else statement is working, okay? So guys, let's remove the console from here like this, okay? And before writing the if statement, let's finish the else statement first of all, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna scroll up. Do you see this shopping cart here? Yeah, what is it doing? It is targeting the ID from the HTML element, okay? So copy the thing and then scroll down. Paste the thing here and then you're gonna write here dot inner HTML equal to backticks, okay? We're gonna make it just blank like this. And on the next line, what you're gonna do is do you remember this label here, which is also coming from the HTML element, okay? Just copy the thing, scroll down here, okay? Paste the thing like this, then you're gonna write here dot inner HTML equal to what we're gonna write here is look at this. First of all, you're gonna write backtick, okay? Then you're gonna write here h2 tab. And guys, here you're gonna write card is empty. Okay, something like this, empty. And on the next one, you're gonna write here, a tab, okay? So what this will lead us to, this anchor tag will, will lead us to the index HTML, which is the home page, okay? Index 
dot html okay so inside here what we're gonna write is we're gonna create a button look at this b u t t o n dot we're gonna attach a home button class name okay something like this then you're gonna hit tab there we go now can you see this one here it's written, it's written class name don't do it guys otherwise it's not gonna work so it should only be a class not class name now inside here we're gonna write back to home something like this one back to home done save the thing now let's look at the result guys now guys if we look at the results screen it looks something like this the cart is empty and back to home page we're seeing this component here now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on the exact center in order to do that come back to your style css here okay and at the very bottom come to at the very bottom here like this and we're gonna write first of all a comment okay so we're gonna write a comment like this okay star exclamatory sign here we're gonna write style rules for style rules for label and uh, and some buttons okay something like this save the thing now below this one we're gonna write text center do you remember this guys one second uh, on the cart html do you see that we have a class of text center just copy this from here okay come back here and paste it like this okay dot paste curly bracket inside here you can write ta tab then center okay then you can write margin bottom 20 pixel okay mb tab 20 pixel save the thing now let's look at the result guys the result look should look something like this and guys the main reason for putting the margin bottom 20 pixel is that if you look at the finalized project here then you can see this gap here this gap is actually margin bottom of 20 pixel you can't see it here that's because we don't have those cards getting generated here okay this is back to home button we're gonna style it right now so let's go back to our style css here we're gonna write home button one second guys let's first of all come back to the cart html okay not here sorry guys cart js and this is class name here home button copy the thing come back to your style css and then you're gonna write here dot paste okay then you're gonna write here curly bracket so you're gonna set the background color bgc tab remove this thing and then you're gonna hit control space do you see this color here 212529 get this one okay next up you're gonna write the color to be white okay next up we're gonna remove the border okay border none okay then we're gonna apply some padding of six pixel to all sides okay next up we're gonna write the border radius to three pixel okay border radius three pixel okay guys next up we also need a little bit of cursor pointer okay curve point tab save the thing let's look at the result okay it looks something like this but guys can you see this card is empty and the back to home button there is no gap in between let's apply some gap in order to apply those gap just come here and then write empty uh, 10 pixel tab there we go margin top 10 pixel save the thing let's look at the result can you see this one here we have a little we have a little bit of gap here so far so good guys now let's test the thing if you click on back to home it should lead you back to the home page can you see that guys perfect let's go back here like this there we go so guys it's working perfectly fine but here's the question actually why are we seeing this component the main reason for seeing this component is let me show you guys so do you remember this function here on the card js we have it okay generate card items we have a if else statement here so the if statement will run only when the local storage is not empty and the else will run when the local storage is empty look at this guys we don't have anything on the basket it's totally zero right let's go back to the home page here let's select something okay I have selected this thing here so now the local storage is not empty our basket is not empty if you go to the cart page now look at this this component is not rendering again why is that guys that's because now the else is not running the if statement is actually running but it is not defined it's totally blank that's why we can't see anything here let's go back to the home page here look at this now let's remove the thing like this okay let's make it zero Let's come back here look at this we can again see the component that's because this time the else is running so now guys let's actually define the if statement here okay so guys follow along with me so on the if statement we're gonna write a return here so what is it gonna return look at this we're gonna scroll to the very top do this shopping cart here yeah copy the thing scroll down here and then we're gonna page the thing like this okay now we're gonna write here dot inner html equal to we're gonna target the basket do you remember the basket where is the basket the basket is actually here and what is this this is an array which carries all of our selected products okay inside the basket we're gonna make a map like this okay then bracket we're gonna write an es6 arrow function like this 
Next up, you're gonna write an X here. The main reason for writing the X is that, let me show you one second, guys. Uh, let's go back to the home page here. Let's select something, okay? Let's select something like this. Let's go to our uh, local storage here like this. Where is it? Uh, let's come here, application, local storage. Okay, guys, this is the local storage data. The main reason for writing this X is that it's gonna target all of these objects one by one, one by one. Okay, guys, that's why I wrote this X here. Okay, you can write anything you wish, no problem. Okay, I'm just gonna keep here X. Now, next up here, I'm gonna write a curly bracket. Okay, enter. Next up, guys, let's return something again. Okay, we're gonna return here a template, literal. So we're gonna write here back tick. Okay, now inside here, we're gonna create a div with the class name cart item. Look at this dot cart minus item. Okay, tab. And do this class name here. It should be only class, otherwise it's not gonna work, okay? Save the thing, let's write something here, okay? Hello, like this. Save the thing, let's look at the result. There we go. If we go back to the cart page, you can see some hello here. One second, guys. Can you see this hello, hello, hello? Why is it repeating four times? Okay, you might have a question like, why is it repeating? If you recall, what did I tell you? The X, where's the X, guys? This X will target all the data from the local search one by one, one by one, and then it's gonna run this function here. Can you see this one here? It's gonna target all of them one by one, and then it's gonna target, and then it's gonna run this function. That's why we got the hello four times. But let's say that, um, one second guys, how many data do we have here? Four, one, two, three, four. Let's say that I'm gonna make something zero. Okay, I don't want anything here. If you go to the cart page right now, you can see three hello, why is that? That's because we only have three items selected inside our basket. Now, there's something strange here. Do you see this little icon? One second, guys, let me zoom in. Do you see this uncommon uh, comma here? We don't need the comma. In order to remove that comma, just come back here. And do you see this here? You just come, you just come here and then you can write dot join, okay, bracket, single quote or double quote like this. Save the thing. Now, guys, let's look at the result, okay? You can see that the strange comma is gone. Brilliant. Let me just scroll out from here like this. And this is the thing that we don't want, guys. We want it to look something like this, okay? So in order to make the thing, we have to write nice code here, okay? So let's get started. Let's remove the hello from here and then we're gonna hit enter, okay? Inside here, we're gonna first of all include the image. Do you remember the image, guys? So I'm gonna write here IMG tab, okay? The source will be, the source of the image will actually come from the data.js. Can you see this one here? Data.js, yeah. We have all the data here, okay? So look at this, guys. Did we include this on the card HTML or not? Yes or no? Let's just check the thing, okay? Let's go to our card HTML and look at this, okay? So before the card JS, we have the data JS, which means that we can freely use this one, this variable inside our card JS. Let me show you. Copy the thing, come back to the card JS. First of all, save the entire thing, okay? Now, if you write here console log like this, look at this. I'm gonna write here a small console log, okay? Console.log bracket page the thing, okay? Shop items data, which is coming from where? Data.js, okay? Now look at this. I'm gonna save the entire thing. Let's go and look at the result, okay? We're gonna hit F12, go to the console. You can see the data, array four. And it carries all the data of the products that are selected, I mean, that are listed on the shop page. Look at that. It got the description, it got the ID, image, name, price, etc. So far, so good, guys. Now, guys, let's go back to our VS Code on the main JS, okay? Uh, so not main JS, sorry, card JS. Let's remove the thing from here, and now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to our if statement here, okay? Now, guys, look at this X. Can you see this one X here? So, what does it carry? What is this X? This X is actually a object. Look at this, let me show you. So, we're gonna write here console, okay, dot log. We're gonna write here X. Save the thing. So, what will happen is this X will run four times. Why is that? That's because guys, not four times, sorry, it's gonna run three times. That's because guys, look at the application, local storage. How many things do we have on the basket? Three things, okay? That's why the X will run three times. Now look at the console, can you see this one here? We got the ID and the item. Now guys, can you see this ID here? I-O-Y something, I-O-Y. Look at the first three letters, I-O-Y. According to the ID, okay? According to this ID, let's search inside our data database. Look at this. Let's come back here on the data.js and where is the IOY? Here is it, okay? Can you see this one here? This is our IOY ID. Now look at this guys. What does this object carry? This object carries our image. It carries the price and it also carries the name. So do you know what I'm gonna do guys? Using this ID, I mean using this X ID, I'm gonna grab the data 
from the data.js and then I'm gonna target this image. Do you see this image here? I'm gonna target this image and then I'm gonna get it inside the source. Let me show you how I do the thing. So what I'm gonna do is first of all, I'm gonna destructure the X. Okay, why do I destructure the X? That's because look at this. Do you see this one here? We have both the ID and the item. We don't need the item right now. We only need the item, okay? So in order to just target the ID, we just destructure the thing like this. Look at this, let curly bracket, okay? ID, comma, then we're gonna write here, which one? Item, okay? Equal to X, done. Now we can freely use the ID, which is coming from this X, okay? Next up, guys, we're gonna make a search function. Look at this, let search, uh, search equal to, so what are we searching from? We are actually searching from this variable. Can you see this variable here? Yeah, just copy the variable, which is from the data.js, okay? Come back here, and then we're gonna put it here like this, okay? So search equal to shop items data, then we're gonna write here a find, okay? Dot find bracket, okay? Now inside here, we're gonna make a ES6 arrow function, something like this, okay? Now you can write anything you wish, no problem, but let's make it simple, guys. Let's write, a Y here, okay? You can write anything, no problem, guys. Let's just write Y, okay? Now, what are we searching against? What are we searching against? Let's see. So look at this ID here, guys. Where is this coming from? This is actually coming from the basket, okay? And where is this Y coming from? This is coming from the data.js, okay? So what do I want? I want to match this ID with this ID, which means that whatever ID we have on the basket, we want to match that with the ID from our database. Something like this, let me show you, okay? So we're gonna come here and then we're gonna write here y.id is triple equal to id. This id is coming from here, which is from the basket and this is coming from the database, which is from the data.js, okay? And then what we're gonna write is, you're gonna write an or statement here or you're gonna make it blank like this. So what do I mean by this? I mean by this is that if you find something, then return it. But if you can't find anything, then just return an empty array here like this, okay? So far so good, guys. Save the thing. Now, guys, we can freely use the image from the database, okay? How do I do it? Look at this. Come back to the card JS and do you see this one here? We're gonna come here and then we're gonna remove the thing. We're gonna write a dollar sign, curly bracket, search dot img. Save the thing, let's look at the result. Okay, the image is huge, can you see that? But we got all the images. In order to make it smaller, let's uh, come back here and then we're gonna see like a width here, okay? Width like this, equal to, then we're gonna write here, double quote, 100, like this, okay? Save the thing, let's look at the result, okay? There we go, our images got smaller. Can you see this one here? Okay, why do we have only three images here? The main reason for having three images is that Look at, our, look at your application local storage. How many things did you select from the basket? How many things do you have on the basket? These are the products that you selected from the shop page. You have only three. That's why you have the three. Which one is missing? The casual shirt is missing. Okay, let's go back to the home page. Here's the casual shirt, okay? So if you select something from here, let's look at the result. You got now four images, okay? If you go back here, let's say that you don't want t-shirts. Remove the t-shirt from here. Let's go back here, there we go. We don't have any casual shirts here, okay? So far so good, guys. Now we also need to apply some styles and get the data here so that it looks nice, just like this one, okay? So in order to do those things, go back to your VS Code and below the image, we're gonna create another div with a class name details. Look at this, dot details, okay? Tab, and this is class name here. I'm really sorry, guys. You have to remove this one from here. It should be only class equal to details, okay? Now guys, inside these details, we're gonna have two div and one h3 tag. Let me show you what I mean by that, okay? So you're gonna write here dot title minus price minus x, something like this, look, title, okay, minus price minus x, tab. Also give an indent here like this, okay? Now let's go to the next line and we're gonna create another div which will be named card buttons, like this, look, dot card minus b-u-t-t-o-n-s, tab. On the next line, you're gonna write a h3 tag, okay? Something like this. Now guys, what is the main reason for recreating these three HTML elements? Let me show you guys. Do you, see, do you see this title, price, and the X? Okay, so if I compare that with the finalized project, look at this. Do you see this one here? We have a, something called casual shirt. We have the price and we have the cross sign, okay? So using this div, do you see this div here? Yeah, using this div, we're gonna create these three things together, okay? 
next up we have something called um, card buttons can you see this one here so using this one we're gonna create this do you see this button here along with the plus minus and the quantity here yeah so guys using this one we're gonna build up this component here okay and do you see this price here we're gonna display that price inside the h3 tag okay so i really hope guys that you understood why i wrote the thing okay guys now let's put some gap in between them so that it looks nice and understandable now inside the first one inside this first div what we're gonna write here is look at this follow along with me guys let's give some indentation here like this we're gonna have two things first one is the h4 tag okay tab next up we're gonna have an icon which will be the cross sign so in order to get the icon just come over to your icons.getbootstrap.com and here you just write here just a x now scroll to the very bottom the X is actually here. Where is it? Um, here is it. Okay, X minus LG. Click on the, this one, then copy the link. Okay, let's go back to our um, card JS. Okay, now paste the thing like this. Okay, save the thing. Now inside this H4, we're gonna write a P tag. Okay, uh, first of all, let's give it some indentation like this P tab. Now inside here, you're gonna write dollar sign curly bracket search dot name. So where is this name coming from? This name is actually coming from the data JS. This is name here, casual shirt, then we have office shirt, etc. Okay. I really hope there, that you understood how I'm doing this thing. Okay. Save the thing. Now let's look at the result. Okay. If you look at the result, it will look something like this. Can you see this one here? You have the office shirt and then we also have an X here. But don't worry guys, even though it looks bad, we're going to use styles to make the thing look nice. Okay. Just follow along with me what I'm doing. Let's go back. By the way, guys, can you see this X here? We're going to make it in red color. So let's do that right now. So do you see this? Um, Where is it? This is B minus X minus LG. Copy the thing. Now let's go back to your main, uh, where is it? Style CSS. So guys, you're going to come back to your style CSS at the very bottom. Okay, here. You're going to write here dot paste. Okay, then curly bracket. BGC, not BGC, sorry. It's going to be color. We're going to set it to red color. Okay, and then we can also optionally give some font weight. Okay font weight we can set it to bold okay bol they save the thing now guys let's look at the result okay now you can see that you can notice that the x is actually red in color brilliant guys now let's go back to our vs code after zooming out uh, where is it here on the card chase okay below this p tag you're gonna create another p tag which will display the price okay of the single quantity unit okay so just right here dollar sign space dollar sign curly bracket again this dollar sign will be the currency and this one will be the variable okay so here you're gonna write search dot price okay this price is also coming from where it is coming from the data js which is here can you see this one here yeah let's go back here and now let's look at the result okay it should look something like this can you see this one here we have the office shirt here we have the price here and then we have the delete button here as well so far so good guys now we're gonna style it in a way that it looks nice okay in order to make it nice First of all, let's go back to our uh, style CSS, not style CSS, sorry, cart HTML. And guys, do you remember this one here? Shopping cart, copy this thing, okay? Like this, now let's go back to our style CSS and at the bottom here, let's create a comment first of all, okay? Comment like this. We're gonna write here exclamatory sign and then we're gonna write here style, okay? Rules for shopping cart, paste the thing, okay, done. Now here, you're gonna write here dot paste, curly bracket. So guys, how did I actually do the finalized project? Okay, how did I do this? I actually use something called display grid. Okay, this is a single column. Okay, so that it it is also responsive. Look at that. If I hit F12, look at this. If I go to the mobile screen, it is responsive like that. Okay, so how did I do the thing? I actually use a single column. And each of this card is 320 pixels in width. So guys, let's do the same thing with our project, okay? So you're gonna come back to your style, CSS here, you're gonna write display grid, DG tab. On the next line, you're gonna write G3C tab, okay? On the repeat, you're gonna write one, comma, Y1, okay? The main reason for putting one is that we want only one column, okay? That's why I have put here one. Then you're gonna write here 320 pixel, okay? By 320 pixel, I mean that the width should be, at, the width of the column should be 320 pixel. Save the thing, guys. Now let's look at the result, okay? We can't actually see any changes unless we set some border around all these cards, okay? In order to set the border around these cards so that we can see it better, do follow along with me, guys. Just copy the comment from here and put it here, okay? So is, it is gonna be style rules for cart item. Where am I getting the cart item from? I'm actually getting the cart item from here. You see this one here? So just copy the thing 
from here let's go back to our card html no sorry not here style css okay come here and then you're gonna write here dot paste okay curly bracket you're gonna write here border okay where's the border border 2px solid red not red sorry black or you can also use that hashtag you can also use this color here okay save the thing now guys let's look at the result okay it will look something like this next up guys we're gonna put this entire thing on the exact center we're gonna have some gap in between them and do this, this pointed corner here we're gonna make it rounded okay in order to make those changes just come back to your shopping cart first of all and then we're gonna write here uh, one second guys we're, we're gonna write here jcc tab okay justify content center okay if you look at the result it has come if it has moved to the exact center okay next up guys we're gonna give some gap in between these cards can you see this one here we have no gaps okay so we're gonna write here um gap of 15 pixel okay 15 pixel save the thing let's look at the result okay there we go we have some gap let's make this rounded let's make this pointed corners rounded okay in order to make that thing just come back to your uh, cart item here okay then you're gonna write here border radius of 5 pixel okay 5 px save the thing let's look at the result there we go it looks something like this all right guys now look at our image here and the content here how does it look like it looks like a column but we don't want that we want it to behave like a row like this okay in order to solve the issue do you know what we are going to do you're going to target which one let's come back here we're going to target the cart html and then we're going to write here display flex look at this df tab save the thing guys now look at the result it looks like our finalized project here you see brilliant guys but look at this guys do you see this office shirt hundred dollar and the x it is now behaving like a column can you see that but we want to but we want it to behave like a row something like this okay in order to do that thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna first of all go back to our main js sorry sorry not main js card js okay i just make some mistakes here so guys come back to your card js and do you see this one here this is the class name by the way guys can you see this one here i made a small error my apologies guys i it is not class name it should be only class now let, let's fix this one as well and every time you see something class name remove the name it should only be class otherwise it's not gonna work okay let's copy this thing guys it's title minus price minus x okay after copying the thing come back to your style css by the way guys can you see this one here i mistakenly wrote two comments of the same name so do this shopping cart here yeah it should match this one and do this cart item here it should match here so let's actually remove this one and write style rules for cart minus item done guys now let's scroll to the very bottom here we're gonna write dot paste okay then we're gonna write here curly racket okay inside here we're gonna write uh display flex tab save the thing now guys let's look at the result it should look something like this but guys can you see this one here this x and these things are not aligned on the exact center okay so in order to solve this issue look at this i'm just gonna come back to all my vs code let me just keep it here like this okay you keep your eyes here okay and then i'm gonna write the code here look at this i'm gonna use aic tab the moment i hit the save look at this they are now aligned on the exact center right and next up guys do this x here i'm gonna put it at the corner here in order to do that we're gonna write jc sb okay justify content space between save the thing now let's look at the result can you see that it didn't work why didn't it work guys let me show you a trick so if in order to understand something like why a certain element is not working always add this okay border okay 2px solid red then you can see the entire element here can you see this one here this is the entire element the main reason for the x not put coming at the end here is that this this content here it is fixed it is locked okay it cannot expand itself so in order to make it expand what we're gonna do is we're gonna give here a width look at this we're gonna set it a width of 195 pixel like this okay save the thing let's look at the result there we go can you see this x now expanding here brilliant guys so far so good now we don't actually need the um, border anymore you can keep it or you can just make a comment like this okay save the thing there we go it looks nice but guys look at this one this is 300 dollars then we have the 100 dollar here we don't want it here we want it to be here just like this one can you see this one here yeah so let's make those necessary changes okay so that it looks like this so let's go back to your um, card js first of all let's expand the thing okay do you see this h4 tag yeah we're gonna put here another class here okay class one second class name equal to is gonna be double quote we're gonna write here title minus price 
So why did I put both the title minus price? That's because this tag actually carries both the name, I mean the title and the price. That's why I named it, I named it like this. So guys, I'm just gonna copy the thing. Let's go back to our style CSS and at the bottom, I'm gonna write dot paste curly bracket. So here I'm gonna write display flex, okay? AIC tab for the align item center, okay? And now let's save the thing, let's look at the result. It should look something like this, but guys, we don't have any gap in between them. Can you see that? So in order to put some gap, let's put gap of 10 pixel inside the title minus price. Here is it, okay? So we're gonna actually gap of how much? 10 pixel, okay? Now look at this guys, we have a gap of 10 pixel here, okay? Do you see this price here? We want to style it in a way that it looks nice, just like this one, okay? So follow along with me guys. So where is this actually located? Let's first of all locate that. You're gonna go to your um, card JS, okay? Now, where is it? It's actually here. Can you see this one here? Search dot price on the P tag, yeah. So we're gonna attach a class here, okay? Look at this. We're gonna write here a class, okay? Equal to double quote, it's gonna be cart item price, okay? cart minus item minus price okay now copy this thing from here let's go back to your style uh, first of all save the thing okay copy uh, after copying the thing go back to your style css okay and at the bottom you're gonna write dot paste okay curly bracket inside here you're gonna write first of all bgc look at this bgc tab okay you're gonna select select a color which we specified 212 uh, control space okay if you forget the thing like this okay 212529 then we're gonna set the color to uh, white something like this okay um, there we go. Now, if you look at the result after saving, it should look something like this, right? We're gonna apply some padding and some border areas so that it looks nice, okay? So in order to do those things, just come here and then you're gonna write border areas of 4 pixels, something like this, okay? Then we're gonna apply some padding of 3 pixel on the top and bottom and 6 pixel on the left and right, something like this. Let's look at the result, guys, after saving. Now look at that, it looks nice, okay? Let's zoom out, okay? Next step, guys, do you see buttons here? Yeah, do you think that this looks very familiar? Yes, it looks familiar. If you go to the home page, we actually imported this component inside our card page, okay? That's why it looks similar. That's why it looks identical. So we are not gonna write it. We're just gonna copy paste some lines from our main JS, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to your main JS. Where is it? Main JS, okay? Then you're gonna open the generate shop function, okay? Now, where is the div with a class name buttons? Here is it. Can you see this one here? So just click on here and then do this thread here. Yeah. So following this thread, you just copy the entire thing from here. Okay. After copying the entire thing, just come back to your card chairs. Okay. Next up, do you see this one here? You can just easily remove the thing because we copied the same thing, right? Then you're gonna paste it like this, okay? Save the thing and give some indentation here like this, okay? So in order to give some indentation, do this, okay? So you select everything inside the div. Then you're gonna hit tab like this, okay? Come here and you're gonna select a tab like this. It should look something like this, okay? Or you can also give another indent here like this. There we go. Save the thing. Now, let's look at the result, okay? Uh, where is it? Here is it, okay? There we go. Can you see this one here? We have the plus and the minus icons along with the number indicator here as well. If you click on the plus or if you click on the minus, it's not gonna work. Why is that? That's because, uh, look at this card JS, okay? If I close up this one, uh, we don't have the increment and the decrement function. That's why it's not gonna work. But if you open up this one, if we scroll down, can you see this one here? The I, this is the minus button, right? It got the decrement here. And this I here, where is it? This is the plus. It got the increment here. Even though they got it here, it's still not gonna work. That's because guys, we didn't define these functions at the bottom. We're gonna do that right now. But before that, um, do you see this one here? Yeah, we don't need this one, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna remove the thing from here, okay? And one second guys, let me make it a better like this. Give me a second, there we go, okay? It should look something like this. Now, one second guys, if you scroll up, do you remember this item here? Yeah, you can just copy the item, which is actually coming from where? This X, where is this X coming from? This X is coming from the basket, okay? Just copy the item from here, scroll down to your, um, here, quantity, okay? Just write here, dollar sign, curly bracket, paste the thing, done, save it. Now let's look at the result. Now you can see the number getting shown here live. So guys, this number here represents the quantity of the item that you selected, okay? But still, if you click on the plus or the minus, it's not gonna work, okay? In order to make the thing work, 
look at this guys i'm literally i'm literally gonna go to the main js okay one second let me just close this thing zoom out a little bit do you see this increment decrement i'm gonna copy the thing from here okay after copying the thing go back to your card js at the bottom okay paste the entire thing like this save it first of all do this you just close it like this okay scroll up and then you close it like this okay also along with this guys we also need to get the update otherwise we can't see the changes on the html i mean on the result screen just copy the update function and come back here and then paste the thing like this okay save the thing you can also fold it like this and there we go let's look at the result okay after saving everything on the card chairs okay so if everything goes well if you click on the plus it's gonna work perfectly fine not only that guys you can see this one can you see this one here it is also working perfectly fine look at that okay click let's click on the plus it's working let's click on the minus there we go it's working perfectly fine okay all right guys there's an issue with our code do you see these buttons here yeah the plus sign works totally fine no problem but the problem is with the minus every time i go and hit a zero the thing this card doesn't remove itself automatically but we want the thing to remove itself automatically something like this look uh, let's say that we have a four here okay or let's say i want to remove this thing look at this three two one zero you see it removed itself automatically in order to implement the same system into our project the solution guys is very 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 simple follow along with me guys do you see this decrement function here yeah first of all you're gonna open the thing okay and do you see this generate cart items here yeah just copy the thing and now do you see this comment here i'm gonna remove the comment and then i'm gonna paste the thing like this okay now look at this i'm gonna save the thing let's look at the result okay this is the f this is our project result so let's go to zero okay three two one zero there we go it went away automatically how is this actually happening guys let me explain okay so guys do you remember this line here yeah what is it actually doing its main job is to filter out all the objects which has an item of zero so once it's done filtering out those data is gonna re-render our cards using this function here you see this one here it is actually used to re-render our cards so if i scroll up where is this actually coming from where is this trigger leading us to this is going to lead us to the function of generate card items which actually helps us to generate these cards here can you see this one here yeah so that's how the mechanics actually work okay first of all it's going to remove those unnecessary data the data which has an item of zero and then it's gonna run the function which helps us to re-render all the cards let me show you a live demo okay so how much is this five let's try to go to zero okay four three two one the next time i hit a minus here is gonna become zero once it turns zero do you know which line it will run the moment it runs zero this line will run and then it's gonna re-render the cards using this one okay that's how the mechanic actually works look at this if you click on this one there we go the data is gone at the same time the card is gone as well so guys i really 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 hope that you understood how the mechanics actually work okay let's go back to the home page and let's select some products okay so i'm gonna select these products here like this uh there we go okay let's go back to the card page and now guys let's compare this with our finalized project okay look at this so we have a price can you see this price here yeah this is the total price of the item that you selected along with the quantity okay so if you click on the plus like this look at this the quantity increased along with the price increased as well so how do you build a component like this very simple very easy guys follow along with me okay so we're gonna first of all do what we're gonna go back to our card chairs here do you see this function which is the generate card items yeah this one okay so we're gonna scroll down slowly okay after the buttons do you remember this h3 tag yeah we're gonna write the thing inside here okay so guys follow along with me let me zoom in a little bit okay so here i'm gonna first of all write a dollar sign to represent the currency okay then we're gonna write here dollar sign curly back inside here do you remember the item guys where is the item here is the item okay can you see that first of all copy the thing okay then scroll down um here okay paste the item here so what does the item represent let me tell you after saving the thing let's look at the result can you see this one here yeah 14 this number here this is the quantity this quantity is actually getting represented here this quantity is getting printed here but we want what do we want we want the quantity to get multiplied by this number here can you see this one here this is the price of the unit this is the price of one unit we want to multiply this with the item quantity 
and then we will get the final result here so in order to do something like this let me show you how to do the thing scroll up do you see this one here search dot price copy the thing scroll down on the item okay you're gonna hit a star then paste the thing done save the thing now guys let's look at the result there we go guys can you see this one here yeah this is the unit price and this is the quantity it got multiplied and it gave us the result here this is the thing that we are expecting but here's one thing that we don't expect every time you click on the plus like this we want the price to get updated but it is not updating right it's not working perfectly fine but every time you, every time you hit the minus can you see that the minus actually works but the plus doesn't work why is that guys it looks quite strange in order to solve the issue first of all let's look at the decrement function one second let's actually close this one like this let's look at the decrement function guys what are we doing every time we click on the minus the decrement function runs eventually this generate cart item also runs so why is this important what does it actually do this helps us to re-render our cards with the updated data that's why guys that's why only the minus works but not the plus in order to solve the issue look at this very simple very easy just copy the thing okay fold your decrement open the increment okay now scroll down guys do you see this console here yeah i'm gonna remove the thing paste it like this save the thing it's gonna solve our it's gonna solve our issue let's look at the result guys every time you click on the plus there we go look at that it's working perfectly fine you see now let's try to click on the minus there we go it's working brilliant okay all right guys so far so good next up do this delete button here yeah we're gonna make a function named remove item so that every time you click on this one it's gonna remove the entire card here okay so let's go and build that up so in order to build that up go back to your card js and below the update what we're gonna write is we're gonna write a function okay that remove item okay remove item is gonna be es6 error function like this okay now inside here we're gonna pass the id so why did i pass the id let me tell you okay so the thing is how does does how will javascript exactly know that which card that you are selecting okay all of this id i mean all of these cards has a unique id okay using that unique id we're gonna delete the thing okay that's why i have included the id in the parameter next up guys we need to copy this and invoke it in the place where the x icon is actually select located okay do you see this one here yeah title price minus x inside here you have the icon here okay so on the icon you can actually on click okay on click equal to double code okay paste the thing invoke it here next up guys scroll up do you see this id here copy the id scroll down you can write here dollar sign curly bracket id done now in order to test whether the thing actually works or not you're gonna scroll down here look at this okay then you're gonna write here let selected sorry selected item item equal to id okay guys next up we're gonna write a console log okay console.log we're gonna write here selected item like this save the thing let's look at the result okay so let's hit f12 okay let's go to the console every time you click on uh, let's say the x like this can you see this one here we got the entire html element inside here which we don't actually want we want only the id only the unique number here can you see this one here yeah so in order to target only that we can write a selected item dot id only save the thing let's look at the result okay there we go every time you click on the x can you see this one here we can only get the unique id for which is actually located for each and every one of these cards something like this you see so far so good guys by the way can you see this console here i mean use this data here they are coming from the console let's remove that thing okay so in order to remove those things go back to your uh generate card items okay here is the console let's remove the thing from here okay because it looks kind of odd okay once that's done guys let's scroll down to the very bottom here um where is it here's the console okay let's make it a comment here now guys let's look at the result okay every time every time i click the cross do you know what will happen every time i click on the cross it's gonna remove that object from the local storage let me show you so if i go back to the local storage here uh where is the item 19 okay this is the quantity of 19 here is the 19 here right every time i click on the x i want to remove this entire object from here okay in order to do that we're going to use something called a filter function so let's do the exact same thing okay so we're going to write here basket okay basket equal to basket dot filter okay 
next step i'm going to use a es6 arrow function inside here like this okay now we can write you can write here anything no problem in the arguments but let's keep it simple let's write here x okay so inside the x what we're going to target is we're targeting against the id because that's the thing that is only unique so we're going to target x.id so what i'm doing is that using this x of the filter function i'm targeting all of these objects one by one and since i targeted the id here what i'm doing is i'm targeting and matching against all the id okay so now let's come back here and then i'm gonna write here not equal to selected item dot id which is this one okay copy this thing and put it here like this okay so what this will do is that whichever item you click on the cross what is gonna do is is gonna remove that thing it's gonna remove that item from the cart and then it's gonna update our basket okay so since the update will come to the basket only but we also want the update to go to our local storage as well so in order to do that just open up either one of them increment or the decrement okay like this now scroll down you have a line called local storage dot set item copy the thing you don't have to write okay just copy the thing scroll down do you see this remove item here on the function paste the thing like this okay done save it now guys let's go and look at the result okay if you come back here let's click on the x okay so what is the number here a where is it it's actually here every time you click on the x the number and the object actually goes away but the object itself i mean the card itself doesn't go away but it goes away every time you refresh the page but we don't want this behavior we want it to update itself automatically so in order to do that what we're going to do is look at this it's very simple guys we're going to re-render our components okay we're going to re-render all of our cards every time we select the cross button okay so in order to do that copy this thing okay copy the thing scroll down and then paste it here like this okay save the thing now guys let's look at the result okay so every time let's say the casual shirt i don't need the casual shirt so i'm gonna hit the x like this there we go it is removing here and removing removing here at the same time let's select this one like this there we go it's removing everything and it's working perfectly fine but guys look at this can you see this one here card is empty why is that that is because we don't have any data here okay let's go back and then let's select something okay something like this and now let's go to the cart page like this there we go okay let's test it again let's click on here it's going here and it's go removing itself here as well so far so good guys now guys let's look at our finalized project which is here can you see this component here yeah total bill and the checkout clear cut we're gonna make this button i mean we're gonna make this component right now in order to make something like this follow along with me guys we're gonna create a function and we're gonna name it total amount so that it can calculate all the total amount of our bill okay so we're gonna make an es6 arrow function let total amount okay equal to is gonna be an es6 arrow function like this something like this there we go okay now inside here we're gonna have two cases the first case is when we have data on the local storage and the other case is when we don't have any data on the local storage okay just like this one let me show you just like the generate card items how many cases do we have here two cases so the first case is when we have data on the local storage and the second case is when we don't have any data on the local storage okay in the same way we're gonna have two cases inside the total amount okay so look at this if okay basket dot length is not equal to zero run this code else we're just gonna return the thing so by else return we mean that don't do anything just stop the process okay next up guys inside this curly bracket we're gonna write let amount okay amount is equal to we're gonna target the basket and we're gonna uh, map the thing okay look at this we're gonna write basket dot map okay so why am i actually mapping the thing now guys let me tell you the main reason for mapping the thing okay the main reason for mapping this thing i mean mapping the basket is that look at this so if i go back to the local storage here yeah look at this do you see this id here and do you see the item here we already have the item okay we already have the item but we don't have the price so uh, using this id can you see this one here what is this i o y right using this id we're gonna go and search inside our data js where is our data js our data js is here using that id which is the i o y can you see this one here 
using this ID, we're gonna search inside our data.js and then we're gonna grab the price from there. Once we grab the price from there, we're gonna multiply that with our item so that we can get the total price. I really, really, really hope that you understood what I mean by that. Now I'm gonna show you the live sample, okay? So in the car JS, look at this. I'm gonna come here and then I'm gonna write here bracket, okay? I'm gonna write, I can write anything, no problem, but let's keep it simple. We're gonna write here a ES6 error function and then let's pass X, okay? Now, curly bracket. Now, you can, you can also destructure the X. How do you destructure the X and how does it happen? Look at this. Do you see ID and the item? You can separate the thing like this. Look, we're gonna come here and then we're gonna write here let, okay? Let curly bracket equal to is gonna be X, okay? Now come here and then write item comma ID, okay? Save the thing. Now, on the next line, guys, what we're gonna do is using this ID, we're gonna search inside our database so guys we don't have to write anything if you recall if you go to the uh, one second guys if you go to the generate card items you can easily get the function here do you see the search function here yeah just copy the thing because it already exists there we don't have to write it again copy the search function then you're gonna just close the thing now scroll down to your um, total amount function okay just paste the thing here like this okay so what is it actually doing it is using the ID to match against the database. Okay, for an example, look at this. Okay, one second. For an example, look at this IOY thing. Okay, it is actually getting stored inside. Where is it? It is actually getting stored inside this ID. Okay, so this search, what it will do is it's gonna search this ID against the ID of the local, uh, I mean, the I mean, the database. Okay, which is actually here. Okay. I really, really, really hope that you understood what do I mean by this line, okay? Next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna return, look at this, we're gonna return the item, okay? By the way, let me actually show you what the item means, okay? So if you go back to the local storage here, do you see this item here, two, two, three, yeah? That's the item. And then we have something called search dot price, look at this. So you just multiply the thing like this, okay? Multiply search dot price. This price is actually coming from here. You see this one here? Okay, so now look at this guys. I'm gonna console log the thing so that you can see it better, okay? So in order to console log the thing, look at this. I'm gonna write here console, okay, dot log. Sorry guys, not here. Cut the thing from here and do this else statement before the else statement here, okay? Paste the thing. Bracket and then do this amount here. Yeah, copy the amount, put it here like this. Save the thing. Now guys, let's look at the result, okay? By the way guys, it will actually not work because you have to invoke it. So copy the thing, scroll down and put it here like this. Okay, bracket, done. Save the thing, let's look at the result guys. Now let's go to the console. Can you see this one here? 200, 600, 7, 75. So how is this coming? This is actually the actually this is actually the calculation of this one. Can you see this one here? The 600 is here, the 600 is here. 75, 75, 200, 200, okay? So we got all the all the total prices of individual cards inside this array here. Do you know what I'm gonna do next? I'm gonna add all the numbers together. In order to do that, what we are gonna do is, do you see this here? Yeah, remove the semicolon and put a dot, okay? We're gonna use the reduce function, okay? Reduce, then you're gonna write a bracket, you're gonna write here ES6 error function, okay? Something like this. Then you're gonna write here X comma Y, okay? Next up, guys, you add the X and Y. What does the X and Y means? Let me tell you. The X is the, the X guys is the previous number and Y is the next number. So what it's doing is by X and Y, I mean that add these two numbers and then get the next one. So that's why I wrote here X comma Y and then I have to write here X plus Y and then comma, I want the thing to start from zero. That's why I'm gonna give it a zero here, okay? Save the thing. Now guys, let's look at the result. There we go. Can you see this one here? It gave us the calculation, the total calculation that we were searching for. So guys, our function is complete. Now we're going to implement that so that it looks something like this, okay? In order to make something like this, let's go back to our VS code. Let's guys, uh, do you see this one here? Either comment or remove the thing, okay? I'm going to comment the thing and then I'm going to scroll to the very top here. Do you see this label here? Yeah, copy the thing. Let's scroll down um, to your total amount function. Below this comment here, paste the thing, okay? Then you're gonna write here dot inner HTML equal to, we're gonna use a template literal. So you're gonna hit back tick and here you're gonna write, then here you're gonna write H2 tab, okay? Then guys, you're gonna write here total, okay? Bill colon 
you're gonna write dollar sign for the currency and then you're gonna write dollar sign curly bracket amount okay this amount is actually coming from here you see this one here save the thing guys now guys let's look at the result okay there we go we got it we have the total bill here can you see this one here brilliant guys next up what we're gonna do is we're gonna have two buttons one second guys do you see this check out and the clear card button yeah we're gonna build this two buttons here inside here so let's go and make those things so what you're gonna do is below the h2 tag you're gonna make a button okay look at this b u t t o n okay button with a class name checkout look at this dot c h e c k o u t checkout tab guys guys it's gonna be class not class name so remove the name from here only keep the class okay now inside here we're gonna write checkout okay c h e c k o u t checkout done save the thing and below this button we're gonna have another button with the class name remove all look at this b u T T O N dot remove all okay tab now again guys it's gonna be class not class name remove the name from here save the thing and uh, also we need to write here clear card something like this save the thing let's look at the result guys it should look something like this it is not styled let's style the thing okay first of all guys copy the checkout from here now guys you're gonna go to your style CSS and now guys you're gonna select for a specific selector that we already selected and we already built that okay so let me just search for the thing it's actually the home button guys can you see this one here yeah so you don't have to write all these styles do this guys follow along with me just put a comma here okay and then dot paste done now guys let's look at the result it should look something like this can you see that yeah in the same way we're gonna style the clear card button as well follow along with me guys come back here on your uh, card js copy the remove all come back to your style css comma okay and then dot paste done save the thing let's look at the result there we go you see much better but guys i want the thing to be in green color just like this one and i want the thing to be red color so in order to do those things follow along with me copy the checkout okay scroll down and put it here like this dot paste curly bracket you're gonna write here uh bgc tab is gonna be which color green like this save the thing and remove all right copy the thing scroll down put dot paste curly bracket uh color oh sorry bgc tab is gonna be red there we go save the thing now let's look at the result okay there we go guys it looks just like our finalized project here can you see this one here it looks totally identical next up guys guys it looks nice but look at this here's a problem every time you click on the plus look at this this number i mean this quantity and the price actually increases but can you see this one here it is not updating itself so guys in order to update this thing i mean this one it's very simple the solution is very simple guys just come over here and to your card js do you remember the total amount copy this thing okay and then guys where's your update function one thing let me just fold the thing like this where is your update function it's actually here can you see this one here just open the thing and then below the calculation function you just invoke the thing here like this there we go done okay now guys let's look at the result okay every time uh this is the result page okay every time you click on the plus like this look at that it's updating itself live it is working perfectly fine okay brilliant now guys here's actually another issue here look at this do you see this 29 here yeah 2900 actually this is 100 every time i click on the cross like this that's going away but it's not actually upgrading itself there was a hundred dollars there but now it should be 2800 but it's not updating itself automatically every time you hit the refresh like this only then it refreshes i mean only then it updates updates itself this is the behavior that we don't want in order to fix that where is the function that removes that item it is actually remove item right so copy this one i mean copy the entire thing open up this one and do you see this one generate card items below this one invoke it like this save the thing let's look at the result okay so look at this how much is this 1500 okay 2800 every time you click on the cross it goes away at the same time it updates the thing here as well so guys it's working perfectly fine now guys let's go back to the home page let's select some data okay I mean let's select some products from here let's go back to the uh, cart page here the next feature that i'm gonna build is the clear cart feature okay every time we click on this one is gonna first of all remove the entire thing at the same time do you see this local storage guys one second 
on the local storage we also want the entire thing to get removed as well so in order to build that follow along with me guys come back to your uh, card js okay at uh, below the remove item or anywhere okay you can write the function anywhere you like we're gonna write here clear card okay let clear card okay it's gonna be an es6 error function like this okay next up guys look at this we're gonna write here basket equal to we're gonna make an empty array it means that whatever data we have on the basket remove the thing okay so guys once we're done removing all the items from the basket we also need to re-render the cards in order to re-render the screen do you see this generate card items here copy the thing scroll down and put it here like this okay done next up guys we also need to update the local storage as well. So in order to update the local storage, just open the decrement or the increment like this, okay? Do you see this one here? Yeah, just copy the thing from here. Uh, close the thing, scroll down on the clear card, okay? Paste the thing here like this, okay? Save the thing. Now guys, we need to invoke the clear card as well. Copy the thing, scroll down, do you see this total amount here? Open it, okay? So where's your uh, remove all? It is here. Can you see this one here? This is the clear card button. So guys, what we're gonna do is we're gonna write here on click, okay? On click equal to double quote. Then we're gonna invoke the clear card function here. There we go. Save the thing, guys. Now, let, guys, let's go and test our result. This is the result screen. Every time you click on, one second, let me also open the local storage here, like this. So we have some data on the local storage. We have some uh, build here and we have some cards here, okay? Every time we click on the clear card, it's gonna remove everything. Look at that, the data is gone and the card I mean, and the cart page is gone along with the price and the buttons. We have only one button, back to home button. Using this one, we can just go back and we can select some products like this. There we go. Let's select some products here. Let's go back to our cart page and now let's go and select this one like this. Look at that. It's working perfectly fine. Okay. Let's click on the cross sign like this. It's removing that thing. At the same time, if you click on the clear cart, it removes everything like that. Brilliant. On the finalized project, you can see that we have in total 12 product cards. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the other images and data into our project here. But before doing that, we have some problem with our code here, which we need to fix. The first problem is with the nav bar. It is not aligned properly on the Y axis. Let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so I'm just going to co go back to the code on the style CSS. And then what I'm going to do is do you see this nav bar here. I'm just going to comment this code. Okay. I'm going to save it. Now let's look at the result. Okay. Can you see that the clothing store and the icon, they are not aligned on the Y axis on the center. So if you want to fix that, you're just going to come here and then you're going to write AIC tab. Okay. Save the thing. Now let's look at the result. Can you see that now it's aligned properly. Okay. So I'm going to bring this code back, save it. There we go. The second problem is in the card page, but before going there, first of all, make sure that you have some products selected here and then you're gonna go to the cart page okay now do you see this number here how many quantity do we have on the basket in real we have 24 and now let's do this okay so i'm gonna remove this one okay so how much quantity is in this inside this card it has just five okay so it is 24 if i minus five from 24 how much is it it's gonna be 19 so let's remove the thing, okay? Every time I remove it, it should be 19, but it's not doing the subtraction. It's gonna do the subtraction every time I refresh the page like that, there we go. But this is the behavior that we don't want. So if you want to fix that, where is this problem situated? Let's find that first, okay? The problem is with the function named remove item. Let me show you where it is. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to VS code and then you're gonna go to card.js. Then here is your function, remove item. You're gonna open up this one, and then you're gonna scroll up, do you see this calculation function here? Just copy the thing and then put it here like this, okay? Save the thing, now let's look at the result, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this one, okay? How much quantity is here? It's five. So how much is here? 19. So 19 minus five, it should be 14. Let's click on this one, let's see the result, okay? There we go, it's working perfectly fine. So our problem is solved. Let's look at the third problem. It is here on the clear card. Every time I click on this one, what do I want? I want the basket to get zero, it, but it doesn't happen. Let me show you what I mean by that, okay? So I'm gonna click on clear card. Now look at that, it's still 14, but it should be zero. If I refresh the thing, only then it's gonna be zero. So guys, the problem is situated in a function named clear card. Let's go find it and fix that, okay? So I'm gonna go back to VS code and it is called clear card, it is here. 
do you remember this one calculation just copy the thing and put it here like this okay save it now let's look at the result okay so in order to look at the result we have to go back to home and then we have to select some items okay just like this now let's go back how many items can you see here it's a let's click on clear card there we go it's now back to zero perfect problem solved all right guys now let's go back to our vs code and then scroll to the very top do you remember this function here generate card items open up this one and then do you see this search.image search.name and search.price what i realized is that you can destructure this thing and make it shorter let me show you what i mean by that okay so i'm gonna come here and then i'm gonna write here let curly bracket huh? image comma name comma and what was the last thing it's price so i'm gonna put the price here like this equal to the search okay copy that put it here like this there we go now we don't have to write search dot image anymore okay we can remove that portion from here like this okay there we go done save the thing now let's look at the result we're gonna get the exact same result okay to see the result let me just click some um, products from here and then let's go to the cart page like that there we go you see there we go you see we got the exact same results and by the way guys what is this called the search is an object right so this is called destructuring an object all right guys now it's time to add the other product cards inside our project before doing anything first of all we have to clear the local storage okay just right click inspect and then you're gonna go to your application wait a second uh, let me open up this one we're gonna go to application then local storage okay so now we have to delete it so you're gonna click on here and then you're gonna delete the thing okay next up i'm gonna go to my github I'm going to provide the link of this GitHub repository in the description down below, okay? So if you come here, then you can realize that it has three branches. We are on the main branch. On the main branch, we have the entire source code, okay? We started from the starter files. And this is product images here. I'm going to click on this branch here. And then what does this branch carry? Let me show you. Inside the images, it got all the other 12 images, okay? So if I come back here, we have also something called data.js. If I open up this one, then it carries all the data of our product cards. So do you see this data here? Yeah, all the data are actually inside this data.js. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna download this thing, okay? So just click on the code, download zip, okay? So guys, once it downloads, open the thing and then you're gonna go back to your desktop, okay? Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna extract it outside like this, okay? Next up, go inside here so what do we have inside there we just have a folder and a file called data.js okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna extract it outside like this okay there we go all right guys so now we're gonna extract both the images and the data inside our project folder like this look at that okay then guys you're gonna find a message like this replace the files in destinations so you're gonna click ok like this so what it's gonna do is it's gonna remove the duplicate files from our project now we can delete this one, no problem. Now let's go back to our VS code, okay? Now you can realize that we have images. How many images are here? 12 images, okay? And then we also have a file called data.js. So come here and what you're gonna do is look at this. Do you see this data here? The data is inside a array here. You see this one array? So come here and then you're gonna close it like this. Copy the entire thing. Now you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to data.js which is actually situated inside your source, okay? Come here and go to the top. Select from here to the very bottom and then paste the code that you copied from the file, okay? So now look at this. We have all of our data stored inside this variable. Now save the thing and now come here and what you're gonna do is you're gonna right click, delete this one, okay? This is coming from the GitHub, okay? Now guys, after saving the code, let's go and look at the result, okay? Our result will look something like this. Look at that, we have how many cards in total? We have 12 product cards in total. But guys, there are some design problems with our cards. Like look at this one, do you see this border here? And do you see the image? They're overlapping with each other here. Can you see that? It looks odd. We're gonna fix that. At the same time, look at this guys. We don't have any gap at the bottom. Just like the finalized project, look at that. We have gap here. So let's go and implement those things. So let's go back to our VS code on the style CSS. Then you're gonna find that uh, selector with the class name shop, okay? Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna write here MB 20 pixel tab. There we go, save the thing. Now let's look at the result. It will look something like this on our finalized project. But guys, if you want to adjust the gap, you can do it as well. So let's come back here and you can also put here 50 pixel like this. Save the thing, let's look at the result. Now look at that, we have a big gap here. Next up, let's go fix the border and the images. How do you do that? Very simple, very easy. Go back to your VS code, 
So now you're gonna find for a selector called dot item, which is actually here. Can you see that? We have the image inside this selector. So how do you select the image from this selector? It's very simple. Look at that. You're gonna write here dot item, okay? Then IMG curly bracket done. Now inside here, what we're gonna write is we're gonna write here with 100%, okay? With 100% save the thing. Now let's look at the result. There we go. Now can you see that the border and the image are not overlapping with each other. But guys, there's another problem. If I zoom in like this, look at that. Can you see that? Do you see this corner here? Yeah, it's pointy corner, but actually our border is rounded. So in order to adjust that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back here and we're gonna place a border radius, okay? Border radius, okay? Radius, but before putting any value guys, let me show you something, okay? So we want to make this thing rounded here and here. We don't want the thing to be rounded here and here. So how do you do this? Let me show you guys. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back here and we're gonna put two pixel first. Two pixel again, then zero, zero. So what do I mean by this? This is the top left corner. This is the top right corner. This is the bottom left and bottom right corner values. Save the thing, now let's look at the result. Now guys, you can see that this thing got rounded and this one as well, but not the bottom left and the bottom right. Perfect. With that, our project is complete. I really, really, really hope that you learned a lot from this tutorial. If you like the video, give a like, share it with a friend and feel free to subscribe. Till then, take care and I'll see you in the next video.